All right. I think I am live. Hello, G... <laughs> Gimacha? I don't know how to pronounce her name. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Chlorophen Master. Let's see, does the chat overlay on the stream or not? I think I switched it off. And this and a viewer count should be up there as well. Alright, now, now the chat should go on the screen, I think. Hello, Lishmael and Nikki Dino 8. Alright, let me lower the quality of my own playback. So, my. I cannot lower my quality, it's just automatic. <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, this is uh, Crastorio 2. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is my second playthrough of this mod, or like the second start at least. I am in the process of recording my very first experience. Um, but I decided it would be fun to try a Dead World start as well. So yeah, let's uh, get into it. I have a map seat which I am going to play on. As you can see, Crastorio adds three new resources to the game. Uh, together with the six vanilla ones and we are playing on alien biomes takes a while to load in so yeah this is going to be our start I will guess I'll just start <laughs> and um, I'll talk a little bit about the plan before we get started and as well as the other mods I am using so let's just make a save so I can reload that. Alright. So yeah, first of all, uh, what mods am I using? So we have uh, Evogi, which is the, this display in the top left corner. We've got Alien Biomes for all the new terrains. I am, a lot of the terrain and Alien... A lot of the terrain and Alien Biomes slows you down drastically when you walk on it, all this kind of sand. I switched that off, so we will be have uh, normal walking speed everywhere. We also have Armored Biters, as that is recommended to play with Crastorio 2. And our challenge is going to be not to launch a rocket, but we need to construct a high-tech transceiver to send a distress call to our home planet. Um, yeah, and don't die to the biters. Right. Okay, uh, I, I know I don't have any features uh, on my Twitch channel just yet. I am, I don't, uh, everything is without advertisements. Uh, there is no donation buttons and all that kind of stuff. This is just like the first tryout stream basically. So I guess I will look into it later if I decide to stream more on Twitch. But for now it's just going to be, uh, oh, it's an ad bot, all right. I thought that was a serious chat. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm qu I'm kind of a noob here, so <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll guess I'll. It's all a learning process. All right, we were talking about the mods. So we have alien biomes. We have chunky chunks, which I'll get to later. Clean concrete damage numbers to visualize the combat. There will be numbers popping up, like in uh, the 100% evolution playthrough. Uh, we got Castori, of course. We got uh, no black lines in the map view. So that's a very nice uh, mod if you uh, zoom in on the map view and vanilla you have all these black lines. With this mod, you don't have that, which probably is much better for video compression too. We've got time buttons, which allows me to speed up the game with the uh, hotkeys. So it's not just me running faster, it's actually speeding up the game or slowing it down even. I will do that in some occasions when something is very slow. Uh, it doesn't really give me an advantage, uh, on the contrary, I guess, since it's pretty hard to avoid biters while doing that. Uh, 
but yeah, some of the slower parts we can just speed up. Uh, the game and evolution will speed up as well. Uh, and in the end we got uh, the recipe book, which is a nice mod where you can uh, look up stuff. So for, for example stone, you can just already see all the ingredients uh, where stone or stone bricks are like uh, used for. So that we can use for planning out the amount of production a little bit ahead of time before we know what uh, what we all need. All right. And then there's chunky chunks, which basically toggles the grid on and off. That is useful like for exploring. For instance, if you explore, you can uh, you can generate new chunks by exactly walking into a chunk. And with this mod, we can visualize that. So that is uh, quite useful. Also, it does not really give me an advantage because you can do it with vanilla by just pausing the game and see if you walk into a new chunk. But yeah, that is very annoying for the for the gameplay. So I I just uh, installed this mod instead, and then we got milestones. That is the last one, I think, which shows you uh, the exact moment when you achieved something. Like this is the Crastorio equivalent of signs. We got basic tech cards. Then we got the standard six colors and then we got some uh, late game additions. So Castorio extends the tech tree in both directions. As you can see, for example, steam engine is a technology. So you cannot craft uh, steam engines from the start as well as pipes. So it's extended in both directions. Um, yeah, alien biomes is uh, indeed quite uh, friendly in terms of rocks but they also um, they don't give as much coal as in vanilla for example these rocks give 30 stone and 10 coal on average but often you get like a really low amount or not even any coal at all so i don't know if it's an advantage because <laughs> there really are a lot of rocks which we all need to clear out in some point to uh <laughs> to uh, <laughs> uh to play also, what I want to get out of the way is um, you st the crashed ship has a lot more components than in, uh, in vanilla. You start off with the same 8 iron plates and 10 uh, bullets for your pistol. But there's also some stuff like we have here a, a power generator which generates some power. We've got a damaged lab and there's like 4 broken assemblers which can... Yeah, basically assemble stuff. So you get some stuff for free, um, which we'll be using to some degree. Right. So I got a detailed opening uh, plan. For, or I got a detailed plan for the opening few minutes, because the problem with that world on Crastorio is biters are really nearby. Pollution spreads really easily. And the technology of gun turrets, which is the first form of automated uh, defense, is hidden pretty far away. Uh, so we won't have those for a while, which means we cannot leave any setup behind. Because even a single biter will come in and uh, just destroy all if you are not there to personally defend it. Uh, the problem with this is gun the automation tech card is a very slow technology. You need a whopping 50 technology cards and each takes... 30 seconds to consume in the lab so that by itself is 1500 seconds or almost half an hour of research in a single lab and we cannot uh, make steam engines at the start either so we are basically stuck with this this thing which can power like uh, one lab or we need to make windmills which are uh, very very expensive and very underwhelming so the plan is to beeline steam power if I can find it, steam power over here. And then we go for the beeline of gun turrets. I want to declare that uh, up front because when I start playing, I probably don't have that much time to, uh, to get into that. But yeah, for now, enough intro, I would say. Let me quickly read the chat. You should consider recruiting some mods or something. Yeah, probably. If the advertisements already come in just in the first stream of a noobish streamer here. Alright, is everything still going?
Is the stream still live? Ah, okay. Waiting to click load. <laughs> okay. Hello, prima donna. You're right in time. We just skipped the boring intro and now I'm going to play for real. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, let's watch the cutscene. Right, so yeah, we have to construct a transceiver and send a distress call to our home planet. That is the win condition. So, first of all, let's grab the stuff from the spaceship, as always. And we'll grab some of these coal rocks, which alien biome litters all over the place, to get started. And also, now that we are actually playing, we can... Uh, set the sounds back to normal because the intro music on the on um Castorio is really loud and the um the explosions of the rocket ship also are some of the loudest sounds in the game so yeah the thing is we immediately want to research military so we can defend ourselves a little bit better and the funny thing is we can do this because we because we got a lab and the first technology cards just require wood and copper cable. Uh, wood we've got right here. And copper cable we can get from deconstructing random elements. So let me just quickly put some stuff on my hotbar. So we can see the kind of stuff that pops up. Let's see. Uh, wood. Copper cable. Oh, there's a lot of uh, intermediate products here everywhere. And I guess we can also find iron gears, we can find electronic circuits, which we won't be using for a while. And sentinels, which are sort of an early game radar, which does not scan progress. Right, so now we just start deconstructing random stuff, which takes a while, but we should get copper cables from that at some point. And also, as you can see, I can now make only one extra burner, but this gives you an immense amount of iron plates and iron gears. So we can have a very uh, a very strong start with a lot of burners simultaneously. Which is especially useful here in uh, Crastorio. As there's uh, another change to the generation of iron plates and copper plates. Which we'll get to once we set up some burners. I'm not getting too lucky with the copper cables just yet. Okay, I guess we can use that speed up key because this takes a while to deconstruct. So now we're on game speed 2. Alright, we got... We can craft the first tech card. Alright, and we can also craft two power poles to connect our damaged ship reactor to the damaged lab. Put in the science and we can immediately start researching military without ever leaving the vicinity of the spaceship. Now these are assembly machines. I am going to de deconstruct those two because I do not intend to, to use them. They give back some better loot than the rest of the stuff. Alright, so we can already de uh, do the second. I ah, know we don't have enough wood. Let's deconstruct this first. Alright, so we have enough to get military researched. It really takes like, it takes like 10 seconds or so to deconstruct those. Alright, so that is enough tech cards for military. As you can see, the lab is working nicely. Shiny glow. Yeah, I'll make sure the, the VOD is available later to see. I might even download it and try to edit it with the boring parts cut out a bit. Right, we want to keep making these uh, tech cards because we want to beeline steam power and we have only two laps to do it, so science is going to be the bottleneck early on. Alright, we already have 68 iron plates and 29 gears by the way, 31. So we can make a 
are really a lot of loaders. So yeah, it is a, a bit boring and slow to deconstruct all of this stuff at the start. It is a bit especially slow. Okay, I think we've got everything, so let's get some more wood. The military is about to complete, so soon we can make a shiny gun for ourselves. Okay, let's wait until that other tech card is finished as well. And we should get some more rocks. Right, so we got 15 more tech cards. The second technology we want really is Iron X. So that together is 50 basic technology cards. And the research is going to be pretty slow. Alright, we have one more thing right here. And then we can see how many burner mines we can make. We can make 17 burner miners right from the start. I even need to mine more rocks to get some... <laughs> to get enough stone to make furnaces. <clears throat> Alright, is, how is the audio balance? Is it alright? Or is my voice too loud? Gameplay too loud? Sound is good, okay. The video parts. <laughs> right, first up we're gonna mine some coal. So the problem is um, we cannot uh, get gun turrets, so we cannot get attacked. Even this damaged lab outputs pollution a little bit. But we want to keep the pollution low enough so that it does not spread to the biters yet before we have gun turrets. Because we want to be exploring a little bit while the tech is ongoing. And I should be making more stuff. So yeah, we want to be walking around a bit. So even if a single biter gets triggered by pollution, it will just eat up my lab and my tech cards. So we cannot let that happen. So I guess... Let's cut down on the coal, we've got enough to start up the first miners. The coal patch is conveniently far away from the biters, but the iron and the copper is pretty close by these guys. You can see uh, the, the biters are already roaming around here and we need to mine right here. So it's just a couple chunks away. So we're going to keep production fairly low. Let's go... Okay, here's the other change to uh, Crastorio. First, you need to set your entire bells. Oh no. Ah, uh, uh, that's the video balance. Alright. I was afraid that would happen. Right, is, is the stream still back up or? Where's my internet stuff? Stream is there, all right. I'll just continue then. Uh, if it, if it uh, falls away again, just spam the chat and I'll hopefully see it. It's, it's on my second screen. So I have to I have to consciously look there. All right, stream still online. Okay, we'll continue then. Uh, we are chopping stuff. All right, I want to make more tech cards as quick as possible. Okay, so we got the first ones done. I think we made fifteen already. So this is going to be enough for uh, iron pickaxe. Alright, then we need another 50 for steam engines. We craft them with 5 at a time. So, I guess that's going to be all 10. Like that. That's going to be enough to get steam engine already. And after that, after that we need to get the red 
card, which is another 50, and gun turrets, which is another 10. So we need at least 60 more wood, so let's get to chopping some trees. So yeah, there's a new a new level of technology, the basic technology, which comes even before red signs. It is quite simple though, just uh, wood, which you just chop, and copper wire, which is like a single craft, a single craft away from the copper plates. Alright, so you can see pollution is raging in these chunks, and it is about to spread to the next chunk. We really should be deconstructing these miners already. I hope I'm not already too late with this. I think my, my internet connection here is not uh, great. So there may be some artifacts and stuff. And uh, just like the random <laughs> dropouts, we already had one of them. Hopefully it won't happen too, too often. Alright, let's insert these tech cards. Now we just need to hope that this lingering pollution does not spread out into this chunk that will attract biters. We are going to be walking away. It's already on 11. As soon as this drops to 15, it no longer spreads. So that is good. We have not polluted any biters just yet. Now we are just looking for this number to not go over 15. We are coming very close here. All right. I think we're going to be good though, so let's go explore. So the problem is if a single biter gets triggered and we are all the way out over who knows where, then he's going to eat up my laps and stuff, which is not good. How is it going? 12.9, 19.2. Not good, not good. <laughs> Mind for too long. Alright, let's chop a couple more coal rocks. 13.5. Okay, I think yeah, we're gonna stay just under it. Also, it needs to absorb at least two pollution points before it can send the biter. So we have a little bit of leeway there too. Well, let's switch on the chunks so we can explore efficiently. Right, is the is the bit rate like bad constantly? Oh, there's a lot of biter bases here, man. I hope we can sneak through the forest here that they won't see me. <laughs> that was quite close, I think. Is the bit rate bad constantly or is it like going up and down? Okay, I, we have a copper patch here. So yeah, this is the other part of the strategy we are going to be doing. We are going to be a bit nomad style, where we are basically just going to be um, mining resources for a bit, heavily polluting the area and then running away. You probably have seen that in some of my other playthroughs, which have a difficult start. Like the ultimate death world challenge, I did it a lot. Okay, that is all my coal. I guess let's go. There's a coal patch nearby as well, so... Okay, we need to not trigger any biters by our proximity. Right, so this is gonna spread fairly quickly and it's gonna pollute the biters, but we have some time to mine. I also should have made a second lap and the windmill. So the windmill plus the damaged ship reactor together, they can power the damaged lap at the ship, at the ship plus this lap here. Nope, yeah, I cannot even uh, lower the qu I wanted to lower the quality of my own stream to cut down on the internet since I'm watching my own stream to see the chat. Maybe there's a better way to do that too, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. So <laughs> yeah, I'm outputting 
1080p only. I don't have uh, options. Maybe soon though, because I have 35 viewers now. I don't know how it works, but... Another change in Castorio is the uh, guns and pistols and bullets. Oh no, there it goes again. There's a program, program called Chatty, all right. You can pop out chat only if you want. No need to watch the whole stream. Pop out chat. I'll see if I can find that. I see I can pop out the stream window, but that doesn't delete the, the stream. It's, uh, Next to the chat button, there's a cork, right. Ah, this, yeah, okay, I did it. Okay, then I can probably close this web page. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so now I won't see if, uh, I won't see if the stream cuts out. I saw it before uh, because I was watching the stream as well. So you'll have to warn me extra hard if that happens. So, okay, now I have my Streamlabs open and I have... And I have the Twitch chat open. All right, the uh, stream seems to be... Okay, again, let's continue. Okay, so yeah, uh, bullet and pistol, they all have uh, bigger damage. This is eight physical damage as compared to vanilla five. So we can, even these armored biters, we can shoot them with the pistol. Let's try to lure them without luring the other guys. So even the armored biters, which have like 20 attack, which is quite a large attack. We can even shoot them down just with the pistol. And another change is you can run at full speed while you shoot. So that is a huge help, especially against those armored biters, which are not faster than you. All right, I really should go back to build my second lap. Yeah, I already messed up my, my own strategy. We should be researching at twice the speed now. Okay, I'll smelt the ore later. Let's see, I think we can walk back over top. Can we craft more stuff? I think we can craft more tech cards. Another 50, 60. Yeah, we, def we still need it for the gun turrets and stuff. Okay, I guess we can use that speed up button. The game runs at double speed. Since walking is quite slow and uh, Castorio hides the car uh, behind oil processing, so... The fuel for the car is some, uh, you cannot just drive on wood in this mod. You need to actual, you need actual fuel for your car, which I guess is thematic, but it's also a bit annoying since, especially with the default alien biomes terrain, which is a lot slower than um, vanilla. All right, so now we have one windmill. The output are whopping 20 kilowatts. Let's get all the tech cards. Divide them over the two laps, and now we can see 260 kilowatts is exactly what one lap plus one damage lap outputs. So now we are researching with maximum speed until we have steam power. So I guess let's try. We have some copper now. Maybe we can. Smell this ore here as well.
All right, so we do seem to have polluted these biters. We can actually check how much we have polluted them. Ah, no, we cannot, because this is the pollution we spread onto those biters over here. Yeah, that's not really a, a decent sign. I guess I could go take a look. If I see that a single biter has collected into an attack group, I might just be able to lure and kill him. I don't see any biters separated from the nest, so I'm just going to hope I'm good. Alright, so we have another bunch of tech cards. Let's go insert them. Then we'll explore further. So we are going back to the iron patch over here. There was an iron patch. I think we can mine some iron off the edge of that in the same way. Oh, I forgot to deconstruct those. That is very bad. That is why we are polluting them. Okay. In that case, we are even polluting these at the bottom. Ooh, that's a crucial mistake. That is a critical mistake, especially because we are polluting them on two sides now. Okay, then I cannot leave. Well, so far for my opening strategy. <laughs> I had hoped to go grab some more resources off here, like this iron, another session at this copper and coal, so we could uh, gather the resources we needed for, yeah, basically to proceed faster in the game. But it looks like we're going to have to go full nomad style for a while. Still didn't see a biter uh, collection. You know what? I think I'm just gonna go for it. Let's uh, let's make a whole bunch of furnaces, and we'll just outline this with furnaces. And hopefully, if an attack comes in, they'll start gnawing on the furnaces instead of making it true and starting to gnaw on the laps instead. I barely ever use a furnace wall, but this might be a good occasion to do so. Alright, we are going out. So it is a long walk back, but yeah, we'll just have to chance it. Automation core is almost complete. Now we are on to steam engine. Right, oh, that is actually a bit closer to the biters than I thought it would be. That is not very far. Okay, the biters are not really too uh, walking on the side of the of their nests. So let's make some space. Now I can retreat a bit. Okay, let's just zoom in and hope they don't come. Right, on the plus side, now I have a whole bunch of coal, which I didn't expect to have, so <laughs> that is good, I guess. Okay, so there's another uh, mechanic in Warptorio, which is fuel pollution. So if you look at the stats on the right side, you can see the uh, burner miners output uh, 5 pollution a minute, except with coal, the output 12.5 pollution a minute, because of coal has a... 250% pollution uh, pollution modifier so that is not great wood is neutral though but yeah wood is very hard to collect enough of manually it barely has any fuel value this is not good barely has any fuel value this is not gonna take a long time to pollute those biters Uh, the thing is, now if we get attacked, I cannot run back. Alright, we are on to steam power. Uh, and after we got steam power, I can actually make some 
some real power and we can expand to maybe like five laps if we have the resources. So yeah, these things are quite slow to handcraft. The iron beam is an ingredient in everything and it takes two seconds to make one. So this is four laps, this is five laps. We also need a bunch of pipes. How's it going? The attack group is collecting over there. It is not too large of just yet, but it will start growing quite quickly. You can see pollution is spreading onto them like every second. If they come now, I can probably still distract them with my pistol. But I think we need to run out fairly soon already. So the timing is quite random when they attack. They can collect for 10 minutes or they can just almost immediately jump to the attack. So let's make, not take too much risk. I don't have any armor. I have a measly pistol. And I do not want to lose my stuff basically. <laughs> okay, now we're gone. Theoretically, these pollution clouds are not connected. This will continue to spread from the center over here out on the biters for a while still. But yeah, they'll either run here, don't find anything and just go back. Or they'll just not even attack at all. That is, uh, those are hopefully the two options. <laughs> uh, I guess we're going to go down here. I like this uh, this speed up function. I will like it even more later in the game. Right, uh, no attacks have come in just yet. We do have a bunch of iron. Which we can smelt in these furnaces. Right. I have all my tech cards in here. So let's just cut out these techs. I want to see if I have enough after steam engine completes. Is there anything else useful I can do while we wait? Guess we will need more wood. We also need some underground pipes. I want to bring my steam engines up to the ore patches. So let's at least make one for now. I guess we have fluid handling so we can make the offshore pump. So underground pipes are longer in Castorio, which is nice. That is two sets. This is three. This is four. I guess four is all right. And then we can put our power plant right here. It will be in this chunk. So that is one chunk further away from those biters than if it was in this chunk. Small, small details, but I guess they all matter. Well, I guess uh, at the beginning though, I will just make more laps in this area here. So we can research technologies faster. Yeah, I think we should... Okay, it looks like pollution has stopped spreading so far. So... If there is an attack group, we can lure them out, basically. So I don't see any biters straining a little distance away from the nest, so... I don't think there's... Biter coming to attack from the south. Now we have a wall of protective furnaces. We have some a little leeway. Well, let's see actually what do we need? We need some pipes and some iron gears. Okay, we are ready. Steam, steam power, finally. Oh, let's uh, make two boilers, two steam engines. Check out how many of these we have remaining. 60. All 
All right. 60 is exactly enough for the automation tech card and gun turrets. And then we can start to play somewhat normally. Let's make one more in case of rounding error since we have... Uh, since we have the issue with the power. We are basically not generating enough power to feed all the labs. And that is one of the instances where science rounding errors occur. Alright, there is one more change to uh, Castorio. That is, these things require power. So, now it is power just from the ship reactor. But as soon as it pumps the first water, the power graph should go up at least it would have if we had fueled our boilers now we have a megawatt of power and we can power our six labs so this very slow half hour technology is now going to cost like five minutes to research with our six labs over here all right so what else do we want i guess we want electric mining drills all right so we have basically two options Um, we can go nomad style and just walk around the map, explore more terrain, find more resources. Maybe we can grab coal here, we can grab copper here, we can find more stuff. And just build the science setup somewhere away from spawn. Or we can just try to play like, like a real man and <laughs> try to defend our home patches while we start mining and researching here. I think I have done enough playthroughs where I just take the Weasley route, so let's try and mine at home and defend what we <laughs> what we have. Alright. So I guess that means we need the electric mining drill. Then we can profit from our steam power. So let's make 20 more of those. And we also need uh, 30 automation tech cards and they require for 5 tech for five tech cards 1 automation core so that is 6 automation cores and we make them by the pair so 1, 2, 3 and let's do 1 extra for the science overflow and then we should be able to start making um, mining drills and electric mining drills output way less pollution than burner mining drills. Uh, first off, we don't need to feed them with coal so they don't have that giant modifier. And uh, second, they mine twice as fast, so that is uh, also pretty good. I'm gonna go back to that iron patch again. It's a bit early, maybe, but. Pollution is already not no longer spreading onto the nest. We we can that attack group was building up quite close by. <laughs> yeah, not a smart man. <laughs> this playthrough I am not wanting to be a smart man. <laughs> okay, so this biter attack group has broken up. The extra biters are still roaming around the nest, but they will have to be resummoned in order to become a problem again. I don't know why I'm building it so far on the iron patch. I could have just built it at least four tiles closer to my location. All right, this this time they're gonna come even faster because there is still lingering pollution here. So the threshold of 15 will be reached almost immediately. I'm not sure I, I, the, about the pollution clouds connecting. I'm uh, just reading the comments uh, now. I'm not sure it works uh, like that if they are connected. I know that you are, or at least from my experience, you are 100% safe as long as they are not connected. 
but I'm not sure how far they can search outside of the source. Right, pollution has started to spread again. We should see some biters running around to form attack groups. Any day now. Why well, that's not happening. The okay, automation tech card is complete. So now we need the red science cards to progress. I didn't think of that. I guess let's research light armor in the meantime. That's also 50, 50 packs, man. I guess we want automation. <laughs> let's research automation first. And then we'll research gun turrets and the mining drill as soon as we are back home. Okay, let's wait for one more uh, batch of 10 iron, then we'll start to deconstruct the burners. I don't trust these guys. Okay, now we need to wait. Alright. It takes 16 seconds to smelt 10 iron ore into 5 plates. That's one of the things Castoria likes doing, is uh, multiplying recipes. You also have it with the iron gears. You don't craft one from one, no, you craft four from four. You craft eight iron sticks from four plates. You cannot do smaller de denominations, which drives me crazy, because <laughs> I like handcrafting stuff, and mods like these, they don't want you to handcraft stuff. They want you to automate everything from an early stage. Uh, let's see how long we can resist that. Okay, we have not gotten attacked here at the home base at all, so that is good. Alright. So here is that tech rounding error. We had 10 tech cards extra and we are at 99%. You will see, I will slow the game down to 1.8 speed. You will see, as soon as I enter, insert one tech card, the technology will complete. I had enough tech cards. There. <laughs> yeah, but this is just one, one single tick, right? Okay, perhaps I, I should have been making these instead of complaining about rounding errors. So that is two, that's gonna be 10, and then 20 more, that's gonna be 30. And then we have mining drills and gun turrets, and I think after that we are going to leave this area behind and we're going to take our whole base up to the ore patches. Right, we created the first automation tech card at 34 minutes. And the first basic tech card at 2 minutes, so yeah. <laughs> Let's see how fast we can get green tech up. I'm guessing it's not gonna take too long, because Military 2 is a green technology, which costs only 20. So we're probably going to handcraft that as well, because it gives us grenades and a new gun, which we'll get to later. Also, this basic, uh, this uh, damaged ship computer can only take the basic tech cards, so we won't need it anymore to research uh, the red text. We cannot use it. We dropped one on the floor. So yeah, gun turret is a very fast technology as well. It's just the research of the automation tech card itself, which is uh, slow. Okay, we're gonna need some more basic ones as well, it seems. Okay, I think we can start preparing to leave this area behind. I guess we are, or we will be polluting guys pretty soon. We can now make gun turrets. So let's make at least two to start off. Maybe three, and then we'll save the rest to get started with mining drills. I guess we have enough steam in these steam engines and the boiler to already take away the coal. So we won't waste it. I want to go away from this area completely to save the spaceship basically. I don't want biters coming to this area. 
So we're also going to deconstruct this damaged ship computer, which outputs pollution. Did you know you can just continue deconstructing uh, after you let go the mouse button? So basically, if I want to deconstruct this, I can just do something else and then I just can continue to deconstruct it, right? And even like insert these science cards and as long as I don't try to deconstruct anything else, it will just continue. But I don't want to deconstruct the reactor. But yeah, this is a, a fun little gimmick. Is it to prevent the low recipe time productivity bug? Uh, I don't understand the question. I probably saw your chat too late, so I don't know exactly what you are referring to. Alright, this should complete the mining drill. We still have 150 steam in our steam engine. And then we're out of here and we can repurpose our only windmill to uh, power the pump, which requires 20 kilowatts uh, by coincidence. Okay, no rounding error, please. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we had sufficient power all the way through. Yeah. So this thing does not output pollution, it should not attract any biters, they should ignore it. And contrary to the damaged lab. Alright, so now we're going to use this windmill to power the water pump and we're going to keep that on a separate power network. So this water pump has full power all the time. So in case of a brownout, the water pump will always receive its maximum power and uh, we won't worsen the brown out due to the water flow becoming too slow if that makes sense Recipe recipes crafting and batches oh wait we need uh, four of these low recipe time productivity is there a low recipe time productivity bug I don't know about that bug actually. You mean that you get like extra productivity for free? All right. I think this is close enough. Steam power, nice. And I should have been making mining drills from the get go. Let's make four for an iron. Two for on copper. Cool, we still have from the early game. Maybe it was good that we <laughs> lucked out on that. I guess two assembly machines as well. All right, I guess now I can switch off these values. They're not going to be important anymore. So <laughs> the game looks normal instead of a number filled screen. Alright, so my gun turrets. Where do I want them? The gun turrets have quite a range as well. Let's place them so that they still cover the steam engines close by the the ore patches, I guess. Something like this. We also need to craft special magazines for those, which I forgot to do. And I forgot to craft my machine gun, which <laughs> the very first technology I researched, military science, and I did not uh, craft the machine gun which I needed. Oh well. Alright, let's keep this in the lower chunk. So I'm not yet switching on any any pollution. So we should be fairly safe still. Yeah, I guess let's just switch it on. We can insert our ammo now. 
So ammo requires coal, iron and copper, so it also requires coal in this mod. And you have different ammo for the pistol and for the machine gun. Cannot even make a machine gun, I'm too poor. <laughs> ah yeah, that might that may be it, a complex color. Because I know in the late game there is like advanced versions of machines and those can become really fast I guess, so that may be the reason. Alright, let's switch off this blinking light for once. Okay, now we are in true defense mode. And we have we are reliably starting to produce the resources we need. We, we don't uh, want to branch out the coal just yet, that's too far away. Alright, those guys will probably start to collect pretty soon. We can draw them out with our pistol. Now we can make a machine gun, let's make a machine gun. And some magazines. And I guess we'll first focus on getting maybe a couple more gun turrets up. Yeah, so these uh, magazines have 30 range. I think the magazines have 30 bullets as well. Yeah, 30 bullets for one magazine, so... Uh, they both do a lot more damage and they have a lot more... Um, they are a lot cheaper than in vanilla, the, the bullets. So you don't need to worry too much about spending more iron than you can mine on bullets to defend your base in this mod because of the bullets being more powerful and the magazines are larger. Where the attack group has started to build up. I think this guy is the attack group, yeah. There I start to collect. Alright, what should I be doing? I should be doing something. I guess we want two more assembly machines. Because we're gonna sort of automate uh, both red and green signs now. In this area. But first I want more gun turrets. Let's make at least three more gun turrets. I guess we should also insert more than one magazine per gun turret at some point. Alright. So how am I gonna do that? I guess we'll just do like... Let's, do, let's pl plan it out. Assemblers, they can insert into the lab. Maybe the other side as well. We can have basic tech and red tech and then just I guess burner inserters to to chain the signs to the further laps or perhaps we'll do that by hand I don't know five laps because we have multiples of five tech cards sounds logical Right, let's, um, I think we can take all of these out with the pistol still. So let's just do the luring them thing and running away. So yeah, uh, the bullets are stronger, but on the flip side, ah, on the flip side, you have to aim, you can miss in this mod. So you really have to shoot your target here. It's quite funny. Alright, so I guess we could do like basic tech. I guess we need uh, copper wire for basic tech. Look at me, I'm automating. Okay, I guess we want the two more assemblers now and then we can go for some more miners. I guess we can try to make some of those iron beams.
This handcrafting from nothing at all is really quite slow. You can see it requires a lot of intermediates, a lot more than in vanilla. I will research optics as soon as possible so I can put down lights and uh, uh, lighten up the screen a bit. Okay, let's do some gears as well. And I guess we can at least already start automating this technology. Okay, that's a hundred science packs of each type as soon as we get more copper wire. Okay, then what is next? That's a good question. I think before we can build a real base, we will have to take out some nearby nests. The nearby nests are quite large. I should have talked about this in the daylight, but oh well. And there's a, there's like biter creep on the ground, so you cannot walk fast through that. So that further makes it more difficult. There's also a lot of worms on that world, which are quite hard to avoid. So I guess grenade and gun turret combat is viable, but Crastorio has a a very different and way more powerful option available to deal with enemies. And we are going to just make a beeline for that. Then we're going to set up a micro factory, which just starts to generate a lot of resources uh, to build a real base while we, uh, that base will be defended by gun turrets. And then we can go out, we can go out to take out whatever nearby nests there are. So we can have a little bit of uh, rest while we design and build the initial base. We are going to get attacks, but it's all right. Okay, let's display the machine gun. I'm curious if we can fully take out that group without getting killed, <laughs> basically. Let's go. Oh, yeah, this is going pretty well. So yeah, the machine gun, pretty powerful. And yeah, we can basically... Yeah, we walk at approximately the same speed as these armored biters. So they are not really a threat if you can run away from them. They are very much a threat in an attack because they are quite powerful and destroy your machinery quite quickly. Um, Alright, so we want to automate the wards. Military too, I guess. All the techs are red and green. We need electronics, 30, steel processing 50, that makes 80. That makes 155, 175. Okay, so that's gonna take uh, a little while, but yeah, steel processing is a fast technology, five seconds per science pack. The green tech art is a five seconds technology, so that's also quite quick. We just need to produce them, basically. So let's get the red things in here. We need these and some automation cores. All right, and I guess we're gonna make some burner and servers to distribute it. One, two, three, four, like eight pieces it looks like. And then we don't need to worry about inserting it by hand. I guess we can start researching the light armor since we have extra basic tech cards already. How is the power? Actually, we don't have enough. So we probably should make maybe two more steam engines as well. It's not really a problem to have not enough power, um, but just everything will run a bit slower. Yeah, the creep is used for military research later on. Let's expand the power plant. I think we're going to have to mine some coal pretty soon as well. So we probably should be researching some gun turrets too. Alright. Now power is good again. 
because we're also going to want to have some more miners. I'm going to keep uh, drawing them out. We already killed three groups this size, so if we just wait, 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 that group of three times the size would have come to attack us, and that might be too much for the gun turrets. Because I can run away, but the gun turrets will have to kill them uh, without moving, basically. Oh, this machine gun is really powerful, man. I didn't get to experience this yet in my uh, default run. The default run was quite tame, but uh, as far as biters is concerned. Alright, we have these things. Let's make some more assemblers for ourselves. I guess we can... We need more gun turrets. And I want more miners as well. Okay, so let's make four miners from the pool. And then <laughs> our resources are finished again. So yeah, in the early game, there's not too much um, incentive to really automate things because the resources are twice or the plates are twice as expensive and it's easy to just keep up handcrafting with whatever you produce. Uh, it's only when you start to produce more, then you can process yourself that it becomes advantageous to to automate, uh, basically. Alright, here is automated science. Speaking of automation. Apparently I cannot target inserters. Let's just put way too much coal into these, so they won't run out. And now we have automated... Okay, let's check out how the gun turrets do against a group that size. We have three magazines in each turret, that is nine. Okay, thanks. And then I don't need to come collect you myself, I guess. That was pretty easy. Six gun turrets seems alright for now. Okay, we need more power lines. Just make everything into power lines. I guess that's all our wood, so we need more wood as well. We're gonna branch out to coal. We also can put down these sentinels. Let's put down one here at the labs. And that basically is like a tree by tree chunk micro radar. So you can keep the area visible while you are away. Actually, I probably should just hook up that uh, damaged ship reactor to cut down a bit on the pollution output. So now we are generating a fraction of the of the power with the ship re reactor. Okay, light armor is finished. So apparently the labs take like a one megawatt, I think, 200 kilowatts each, and the miners only a little bit. Um, right. Gun turrets and magazines. And chests, I guess. I am not ready to do this. <laughs> Let's first make a couple chests. And then we'll go two gun turrets with some magazines. I guess let's keep the pollution on our side. Okay, let's just collect some random wood from over here while we wait for the gun turret to complete. Alright, I guess we should keep on researching. Forgetting about that. Let's do steel processing first then. Since it's a 5 second technology that should easily eat up all the produced science specs so far. Alright, at some point we can automate the production of wood. Actually, we got an attack over here. And an attack over there, which damaged something. A gun turret, alright. Okay, we got like two biters on this side. From where are they coming then? From where are they coming then? That's a good question. So we have got some coal as well. 
I guess we should go back to put more gun turrets there at some point. But for now... Alright, where are they collecting now? Somewhere far away? Hey, on the back side. That is annoying. That means I cannot lure them out anymore. Yeah, we... <laughs> we are still missing that one tick from the early game. Right, let's just put our own assemblers maybe here. And we can make... Let's make some iron beams. Iron gears. Copper wire. So we need it for science. Science is stalling again. Alright, we need the automation cores to get red science going again. I'm a little bit all over the place. Guess let's make some repair packs to be even more all over the place. So yeah, re repair packs, very simple. Iron, copper and stone for some reason. I guess I could build like a furnace wall or something. It's going to be a big group before it attacks. I cannot really do anything about it. I can do the same like in the first episode of Warp Torio, where I just try to get them to chase me while I lead them next to my gun turrets. That should keep their focus out of... Uh, away from me basically. Right, it's time to make some more miners. We need to speed up this a bit. Let's uh, go double. Problem is I cannot really I cannot really lure them because they are too far away. I will probably die if I try to because it's too far to run back, these small biters will eat me alive. I can make a light armor now though. The steel processing is finished. We just continue on the way to green science through electronics. I just need to keep I just need to focus on keep making science basically. Okay, we need to insert this in here. These need more automation cores. We are again out of power. I guess because we are out of... I hope they don't come now while I go take this coal. It's, uh, we can see it on the map. If they are suddenly a lot of red dots appear, then it's not good. Alright, looks like... We got lucky. Oh, here they come. Right, I, th I guess I'll help out. Let's go here, go down, come on. Yeah, that took them quite a while. <laughs> That's good I have six gun turrets here. And that I caught them. Now they collect on this side again. So that's uh, beneficial for me. I can basically draw them out whenever I want. Alright, we have our repair packs. And some automation cores. 
Let's keep making some of these as well. This will keep going for a little while still. I guess we can insert the wood. Okay, so now we are limited by the labs, but soon we'll research the green tech card. And that's a very fast technology as well, so we'll be alright. I guess we need to definitely prepare some more gun turrets. Do we have we still have iron beams? I guess we need iron gears a bit. Okay, that's a smaller smaller group. We are out of bullets though. So let's make some while we continue on to the logistics tech car technology. I guess once we can take out this nest, it will we can expand a bit more, it will calm down a bit. Because basically the pollution cloud is basically this size. If you just look at this nest, it's this absorbs most of the pollution. We are getting some pollution absorption here as well, but once this nest is gone, our pollution cloud can be this size before. Uh, annoying biters. Alright. We are making bullets. I want to make more gun turrets as well. Okay, I'm gonna make sure there's at least... There's like eight uh, magazines in every turret. We can expect attacks from multiple angles now. Not not very heavy attacks just yet, but here, here, and here already they're polluting for sure. The furnaces are faster than the miners in this mod, so it doesn't really matter, they run out of coal all the time, as they will catch up again. Okay, yeah, we are out of coal, we are out of these things. I guess we will lure those guys before I go take the coal. Right, and before we even kill them already, more than 10 have collected again. Look how fast they are collecting, man. That's pretty fast. They are basically... We are almost capped by the spawn rate of the nest, man. All of the biters, in this chunk at least, as soon as they are uh, spawned, they get called into the attack. Looks like the next group is gonna assemble on the left top corner again. Okay, I need to put some more gun turrets down here as well, because attacks from the south are going to come. That is bad news for... ...for the coal mine, since I won't be here to help out. The attack might be quite big. I don't know. Yeah, we have uh, we have armor biters. I don't really care about the evolution factor in uh, Rastorio, as the gun turrets are so strong. We already have 10 damage be before even researching any damage upgrades. And medium biters have like 4 armor, so that's already 6 damage. It's not really that bad. Even the armored biters, let's see if I can mouse over one. Even the armored biters have only uh, one physical damage and 10%. So that is not really, they are not really that armored. Really. <laughs> it 
So no, once I can, I will, I will start taking out the nests because we need more space for uh, for our pollution cloud to grow. I don't want all the pollution to get converted into heavy attacks all the time. I want to be able to just set up some uh, lighter def lighter defenses around my entire base, and that should hopefully keep the biters in check until we can find a more permanent solution. Okay, I should I should be chopping wood, I guess, for the basic tech cards. Yeah, there's really a lot of chopping to do. Okay, I guess we can maybe switch to get Steel X. That is a very slow technology, 30 seconds again, since we don't have any science packs produced anyway. And we can build up the backlog of technologies and then uh, of technology cards and then we can quickly uh, research towards military science without losing much time really. Okay, we got the attack on the coal mine. Yeah, not too big, but yeah, I'm glad I built those extra gun turrets. I should keep handcrafting stuff. Just whatever I think I need at the moment. The queue should always have something in there. It's like a real speedrun. The, the, the medium armor biters are actually pretty tanky, by, but by that time I should hopefully have um, I should hopefully have some damage upgrades on my gun turrets. And if we look here, the, the, the damage upgrades are quite heavy. Uh, you get plus 25% damage on both the gun turrets and the bullets on the first research already. And vanilla is just plus 10. And they already start out stronger, but that means with the first damage upgrade, we're gonna get over 50% damage on the gun turrets. Right now they do 10 damage, and the small biters, they have uh, 15 health, as you can see here. So that means we are going to be able to one-shot them, as we're going to do slightly more than uh, 15 damage on the upgraded gun turrets. Alright, I think it definitely would have been faster to uh, to play like a smart man instead of a brave man. So now we're definitely polluting here already. There may be an expansion here actually. Look at that pollution that is just going in there and immediately disappearing. We may already have an expansion over here. Because there's no trees in this chunk. There's no way that... Uh, there's no way that that chunk is absorbing the pollution immediately otherwise. Right, I just gotta keep the signs going, but I'm doing a very bad job of it. Alright, now it will keep going for a little bit. That is a huge group, man. Oh man, I need to... Uh, I think I, it's time to get some more gun turrets down. I want to expand my miners, but I really can't. Okay, more ammo it is. I mean, I guess I could maybe try. All the biters have been called to their group. Could try to kill the nests as there are no biters to defend it, only worms. I think it will take too long though. Just 
could try to do it with gun turrets. Let's see if I can get their attention if I shoot the nest. Ah yeah, some of them. Okay, that is good. That's exactly as it should be. Because my armor won't last that long against these small biters. Well, let's try that again. But now we shoot one higher. Then probably most of them should follow. Oh, oh all of them. Oh man. This is bad. Run, run, run. I didn't eat fish. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> that was way closer than I would like it to be. <laughs> I hear my heart beating in the playthrough. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay, we are out of power, it seems. I was thinking, why aren't those miners moving? But yeah, I guess that explains it. Yeah, biter moment, for sure. <laughs> Alright, keep the signs running. I need to collect more wood. Now I can go away. That biter group gave me some leeway. We got another group of biters here. I may be doing the furnace wall around this here. Let's do the furnace wall. That was not too big yet, just in time. Let's go chop some trees down here. And then we can catch that group again there. Yeah, we really need to get rid of those guys. As fast as we can. Okay, I think that's enough bullets for now. <laughs> just shift click craft all, but I need to make some more of these, some more of these. Keep signs going at full speed, if at all possible. Yeah, I had my doubts too about Castorio in the beginning, especially because there's uh, there's two specific mechanics which take away much of the challenge. But I kind of turned around while playing it. Uh, I just started, and it is not it is not super complicated to get started. the The recipes are still overseeable, and uh, yeah, there's a nice twist on several things from vanilla. While it does not stray so far from vanilla that you cannot use your basic factorial knowledge anymore like with some other mods but it doesn't change absolutely everything you know and the progression still is uh, mildly the same uh, let's keep these going i still didn't have enough coal to things of like half stacks all right I guess maybe I should do a furnace wall on this side here as well. Power is out again. Okay. Right, steel X finished. I guess we should have now a lot of technology cards stocked up. So this should go really fast with this 5 second technology. And then we can prepare for military too. What do we need actually? Electronic circuits. Uh, electronic circuits basically and iron gears. That's all. Right. Wood. A small attack from the south. 
That's all right. Okay, we need more copper wire. We don't have any in there. Okay, we have 130 of those. That's probably good for now. Let's change one to iron sticks, which we need a lot of as well in this mod. Okay, the logistic tech is already finished. So, I guess we will prepare to go on the offense now with military too. But we cannot research it just yet, so let's first go for heavy armor. For that we need to actually smell some steel, which is also different in this mod. Uh, let's just make them by hand. I guess if we are gonna make sure we keep maximum power, actually we are right on the edge of our capabilities it seems. Okay, first logistic tech are 1 hour 15. So, so far every half hour a new tech car. That's probably not gonna keep up since we are gonna have a real automation before. Uh, we're gonna have a real automation before we research any military tech car. At least that is the plan. I hope the biters will let me do that. Alright, uh, fuel that up. Okay, I think I also need more assemblers for myself. I want uh, gun turrets, maybe I can make them in here. Okay, I can make at least four in there. Let's make more of those. I'm gonna want more gun turrets to defend while we are gone. Look at that again, man. Let's try to lure a couple of them, not all. Just a couple. Okay, next little bit. I guess we can lure the rest as well. Too late. We missed the shot. Alright, now we got them all. This time we're good though. I say very confidently. <laughs> right, green tag is finished. So I guess we can queue up military signs and let's work on smelting some steel. The steel smelting requires coke and iron plates in this mod. So we're gonna need to make some cokes and cokes are basically just wood and coal. So I guess let's make Okay, you, you go ahead, attack the truck, I cannot even shoot him. Alright, uh, coke, just wood and... ...and coal, basically. Plus some coal to fuel. And then we can make... Uh, ...steel. We don't, we don't need a lot of steel, we just need some for the heavy armor, as of this point. So that is the heavy armor. We cannot make it just yet because I started too late with smelting steel, but that's all right. The other very important thing we are going to get from military 2 is this thing, the anti-material rifle. It has a range of a whopping 70 units and that is completely game breaking, basically. It just breaks the combat. There is no skill to it. I can even, I will, and I will, I will speed up the game when I'm fighting the biters. Because it's very slow, but very reliable. What you do is you just place a backline of turrets. You take your rifle and you start shooting the, shooting the nests. And the biters will run into your turrets while you kill the nests. And you can do that with any nest, basically. Even if it has medium worms or big worms. You can stand far enough away to... Uh, to not be in the line of fire of the worms. So yeah, that is one of the reasons why I didn't really want to play Castorio at first, because I thought that would be very boring. And it, it kind of is very boring in a way, but it's also 
this mod is not really about the biters, you know. So I guess it's kind of acceptable to uh, make combat easy, I guess. All right. Military 2 is about complete. I need to collect the steel plates from the furnace. Right, I think I want some more, at least four more iron miners, four more copper miners while we are away, and I guess four more coal miners, and some chests in general. And I should make sure science keeps on going. While we are away, so I need to chop more wood even. Alright, more gun turrets. Okay, I guess we can just anti-material rifle this nest already here. Okay, that will also make enough steel for the heavy armor. big attack at the coal mine but that's all right um right so yeah the anti-material rifle requires a little bit of steel i'm making it already but it's at the end of the crafting queue somewhere let's cancel that and we'll make it uh when we have focus on it but yeah that will that's a very good deal also we can make some grenades This works very good if you if you are the focus they don't start to attack your stuff okay i need to go chop more wood man focus science start of science build the miners and go kill nests that is the plan i'm getting too distracted by side uh, side quests <laughs> side explanations i'm very prone to be nerd sniped by a lot of different things. Okay, now we have the second Steel X technology, so now chopping is a whole lot less annoying. My handcrafting queue is always full. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, this has again. I haven't. I'm, I, I am not even researching anything, man. I cannot even research optics. I first need to go through these very slow texts, which are on the menu. But uh, I guess it does not really matter that. Much. Let's go first. Uh, physical projectile damage and shooting speed. It will go. This is the first things we'll benefit of. It's gonna take a while, but that's all right. Probably should make three more laps as well, since these are all slow technologies, and two assemblers should be able to keep up with approximately eight laps. We can make the heavy armor and the rifle. Let's. My handcrafting queue is full again. Steel beams. At least I can. Uh, this is still pretty full. Alright, that's a hundred. Now I am organized. Exactly a hundred. That will run for 20 cycles. Now I need to get this to run for 20 cycles. Alright, so we have 150 of those, that's 200 of those, and then we need a bunch of automation ports. Automation cores, can I make those? I can. Not a lot though. Right. Uh, 
Ah, they killed the power. We have another attack coming in from this side. Okay, yeah, that's not good. Okay, what got destroyed? Uh, one miner, two underground pipes and some power lines. Yeah, I'm lacking a bit. I think I should not expand the miners before I go out. I am a little bit too much behind on defenses, basically. These are actually... probably should take the power plant maybe a bit up, though. So, like this. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, so this actually does not matter, since... It only connects to the coal. Ah oh yeah, wait, there was two of those destroyed. Okay, that connects again. No steam engines back. Alright. So I guess we are fine again. Yeah, my defenses are not up to speed. I think I maybe have to deconstruct the base while we go out to kill some stuff, at least for the first round. Because we are quite severely polluting on too many sides at once. There's gonna be quite big attacks coming in. I can keep the signs going maybe, but the mining I'll have to switch off. Okay, that is 100 cycles as well. Alright, I guess uh, yeah, I'm too slow. Too distracted in the... In the process of... Um, streaming. Good morning. Alright, so yeah, okay, we are finally ready. I'll keep signs up. Signs and the steam engines are decently enough defended. And we have enough of these to make a bunch of cycles. We have enough, I guess, to complete these uh, two gun technologies, which is the most important at the moment. I still have my burner miners, so I may do... I may do the gorilla tactics, where we just find an ore patch, mine some resources and run away with the burner miners, while we are out exploring. Yeah, I think we have to do that. Alright, I guess we're gonna place even more gun turrets. I don't have even more gun turrets. And I cannot really make even more gun turrets at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna be handcrafting. Since I will have limited access to resources and I don't want to overproduce more steel beams or iron beams if I don't need them. And I'm just I'm going to take down this already. So I can reclaim at least six of those gun turrets. I have 1.2k coal that should last me a while. Okay, first lesson always take down the gun turrets last and check your surroundings before you start to deconstruct the gun turrets so that you don't do it exactly before a giant biter wave arrives. That would be bad. But yeah, my dreams of a speedy start have been already demolished. I guess we can get rid of these gun turrets as well now, since we don't have the miners to defend. And we'll just set up a couple at the edges here instead. Yeah, 
there goes a gun turret, I think. No, it survived with 35 hit points. Okay, I'm gonna keep science going. Let's do make that heavy armor now. We need the light armor. And let's do make that anti-material rifle. I can't because I'm out of steel. And I'm smelting a power pole. Let's smelt a broken power pole then. Guess it's still not enough. Okay, let, let me just focus a little bit because I'm collapsing. That is fine. Alright, so first of all, let's insert half a stack of coal in each of those. This is heavily enough defended. gonna put like eight ammo in each of these turrets now I can make the anti-material rifle and the ammo for it I'm also gonna take out the submachine gun so I can have the ammo on my bar together with the gun turrets and I'm gonna handcraft some grenades as well So by taking out the submachine gun, I get the bullets in my inventory instead of in the gun, which is going to help tremendously in helping me to locate them. Alright, so this is like over 200 bullets per turret. Attacks should slow down a bit. already for the next batch of signs okay i think it's time to start showing off this awesome anti-material rifle i spent all my gun turret bullets i, I can use the, the backup from these ones so basically you build a line of gun turrets preferably a little closer to the nest but, and then you just do this You can just take them out from very, very, very far without any danger, and it takes it takes a good while to do that, especially on that world with the larger nests and the more numerous nests. And the biters walk in the way all the time, so sometimes you shoot them by accident. You also cannot shoot through rocks, so you have to find a good strategic point to. Uh, do not get blocked. Okay, we get another attack coming in there. That's also will ha have them focus on me. Okay, this is going to drive up the evolution factor as well. So I guess uh, in not too much time we're going to see the medium biters and the uh, medium armor biters. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's such a meme that you can burn power poles. It's also very annoying that if you just control click into a furnace from your inventory, that power poles are basically the default thing to get burned. <laughs> okay, we're getting heavy attacks from everywhere now. I guess it should slow down now because pollution will be spreading a lot, a lot less heavily on, on the biters pretty soon. Yeah, but I waited too long. I waited too long before uh, going on the offense. Or perhaps it's just a lot easier if you just uh, oh here's a rock if you just nomad the nomad strategy is uh, very it's pretty reliable to pull off I would say so you just walk around mine and run away to the next patch and don't pay don't pay the pollution price in attacks from the biters right this nest is completely gone don't worry I installed that uh, uh, speed up mod for a reason. I'm going to use it on the uh, 
on the next nests. All right. Let's do the grenades later. I want to refill the signs before I go away. Let's go scoop up the goop. We have a creep collector over here. And this thing, this slows you down tremendously, which makes manually attacking nests a lot more difficult. But now we have killed the biters, we can collect it and later we can turn it into that's basically one of the ingredients for military signs. Mining coal rocks out of habit for no reason, why not? Alright. So let's get rid of some of the ore. Yeah. At least we can keep signs going. So if I would play it smart, I would build signs not... Whoa. I just happened to see that. Hello. Focus on me, please. Don't kill my power lines. Thank you. So yeah, if I was smart, I would build my lab setup somewhere over here. And just uh, make sure I have enough sign specs to fill it. And then just go mine, 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 mine. Bring more stuff. And that would be very easy. I, I would not have to deal with all of this. But because we are mining at the same place as that we have the labs, the attacks will keep coming in. The lingering pollution from the mine is still spreading out onto the biter nests. So yeah, not uh, ideal. Okay, I guess we can insert the... Um, the stuff. Okay, we already did this. How much wood do we have? Not a lot. Okay, let's just grab all the wood and then we'll divide it. We have a bunch of these automation cores soon. And we have the blank tech cards. Again, I don't have wood. Yeah, evolution is going to go up pretty fast once we start taking out a bunch of those nests. Alright. I need to keep in mind that I do need copper and iron for my bullets. So I think, yeah, we are just going to go walk around, do some guerrilla tactics, kill some nests, have some waves of mining, and then we come back to build a real base. Hopefully we can get it done in a reasonable amount of time. Alright, that will do, I guess. No, it won't because we have way more of these. 20 more automation cores. Oh, I missed. Oh, I'm using my expensive ammo. I shouldn't be doing that. I guess I should be crafting a whole bunch of rifle magazines for the gun turrets because they are going to draw out heavy attacks while we slowly, slowly focus down the nests. It's quite expensive. Even with the very, very reasonably priced, very reasonably, <laughs> very reasonably priced <laughs> bullets in Crastorio. I don't know, some lines are just so difficult to say for me <laughs> randomly. Gorilla Tactics. Yeah, I guess Gorilla gu Tactics. I don't know how to pronounce it. Gorilla Tactics, I guess. Right. Another bunch of tech cards in here. Some automation cores in there. That is gonna last a while. Now we can match it with the wood. We can match it with the copper cable. That's gonna be... Right, so 85 anti-material, let's make that 100 and then we just will fill this to 100 as well. That gets through all of our copper. So probably the first thing we want to find is copper. So I guess we're going to go around in this way and maybe we can do a quick session of copper mining before exploring out over here. 
Right, the pollution spreading has stopped actually. You see, there's no longer blinking on there, not as heavily as least. So the attack sizes are going to be relatively small. We can do whatever we want. And this is now our low pollution tech zone, which I originally thought to build somewhere else. But yeah, it was uh, quite intense actually. Let's go explore. We have 14 gun turrets, which is more than enough. We have the ammo. And now we basically go explore around our starting area a bit as well as taking out the nests and gathering a little bit of resources to start off the real base. We're also going to be collecting uh, more wood to make more tech packs as, as if we happen to come across a forest. Alright, here is another nest. It's a pretty small one. I guess it's on the list to take out. Here is copper. I could take this copper. No, I can't. Okay. Yeah, that is definitely too close. Okay, we're definitely get, going to get into medium biter territory on this trip. Okay, there's biters everywhere, basically. Right, yeah, just a light attack came in on the base. It's too late to see it. Man, there's just giant biter bases everywhere. Okay, I think I'm going to go take these guys out. There's a lot of rocks here, so I guess I need to come from maybe this direction. Can I walk through here? I ho I'm hoping I can. Barely. Well, there's a lot of rocks here as well. I guess we're going to stand over here and we have a free shot on most of the nests. So, prepare, here comes the cheese. Just insert all our rifle magazines randomly. And here we go. Let's wait for the biters to get out of the way a bit. And then I'll speed up the game. At least we have more damage now. And the shooting speed upgrade is about to come in as well. That will help tremendously. But yeah, we started off with 66 damage, now we do 83, which is already a lot better. So yeah, the game is uh, running at about 2 times speed now. The biters are also running at 2 times speed, so it is not giving us an unfair advantage. The game is just running faster to reduce boringness, basically. I'm not even looking at my gun turrets, I'm just trying to aim at the nests. This is such a reliable strategy. Alright, it is night and before we had taken out all the nests. So now we just aim the worms. Alright, this is the shooting speed upgrade. A lot faster. Of course we're still running on 2 times speed. Now we are back. Alright. So that was the first nest. We are up to 14.7% evolution. It is going to go pretty quick. Okay, technology, right, technology. What do we need to build the real base? This is green technology. There's not an actually that much more uh, stuff left over to research and just the red technology tree. So we have the shelter. Actually, I have a shelter on me. The shelter is basically this thing. It's basically a large chest and your respawn, your respawn point. But we don't need a respawn point because we're not going to die. Ha ha ha. I hope. <laughs> Let's make the grenades <laughs> so that I don't die. <laughs> what else is there? Uh, logistics. Uh, logistics seems like a good call. Uh, fast and Surder seems reasonable. We don't really need it to start out though. What we do need. Let's research stone walls. We don't really need that either. But let's research the crusher. Which is a new recipe. So you crush, basically you crush stone into sand with this thing. And then you can smelt that sand into glass with stone processing. Um, you smelt it into glass and then you can use that glass to build greenhouses. And greenhouses are the way to automate wood in Crustorio. And another nice side effect of this greenhouse is that it absorbs 5 pollution a minute. So instead of outputting pollution like all other machines, this one absorbs a little bit. So that is quite nice. We can place these maybe in a strategic way to 
uh, negate the pollution output a little bit. So yeah, we're going to go for that as well. And it appears that you can also make trees. I didn't get to that yet, but it looks like you can have recipes to make trees in these greenhouses if you research this technology. But for now, I guess this is going to take a while to research. It's mostly basic tech cards though. So I guess I should be focusing on getting some wood. So uh, I should be focusing on getting some wood so I can oh, make more basic tech cards. We should also focus on getting copper, I guess, before we will need the basic wood. Yeah, I think we don't need to go too extreme on the taking out nests just yet, since we have no real source of pollution at the moment. We'll just take out the closest ones, and then we can have a little bit of time uh, without our pollution polluting the biters too much, uh, which gives us the time to set up um, a base and some real defenses. Alright, here we go again. Double speed. Yeah, I don't really need to take out the worms, but they only take three shots. And I need to collect the creep for the military signs. Later on anyway. And I don't really want to... Walk, uh, walk back. Also, this gun is not 100% accurate, so it will deviate to the left and right a bit. So sometimes I will shoot the worm, and yeah, it's not too much trouble to take them out. Actually, medium worms have a lot more hit points than small worms, and those are actually quite tedious to take out again. All right. Okay, one more, one more strategically hidden worm behind some rocks. Okay, let's take out Let's help that poor biter out. I will I'll, I'll help you my friend. There, isn't that nice? No? Alright. Okay, how many tech cards are still in here? Okay, we're still producing, we have 200 tech cards in there. Uh, it will, production will stop soon though, because we're out of copper wire. I guess we're fine though. I think once we research these technologies, I think we may have enough science packs already. Before we have a, a real base. Okay, I guess I should be continuing on the... Okay, let's go check out... Oh, look, 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 look. Is that, is that the expansion we were talking about? It could just be. One burner inserter out of, uh, out of coal, I guess. Ah, yeah. I guess it's alright. Alright, so. I guess we can just mine copper at home. Let's go to this nest and then we go back and then we'll take out something over here and then we'll build a real base. That's the plan. Cannot resist coal rocks, man. Cannot resist them. And I need to chop some wood on the way. Okay, I'm, I'm walking down, which is pretty dangerous due to the, this bar over here. Yeah, here. Here they are. Expansion. Is that all? I guess I'll give the honor to the gun turret in that case. That was faster at least. But for the larger nest with a lot of worms it's a lot more dangerous to do it that way. Alright, I guess we are chopping some wood. I could just uh, speed up chopping wood as well. I guess we don't actually need that much wood anymore. 
Right, another fun mechanic in Crastorio is this. You die by walking next to ur uranium. I guess it makes sense in a way. <laughs> but yeah, also if you carry it in your inventory, uh, any uranium stuff, it is pretty bad. Okay. So I guess we'll go back. Boom. We are now in this corner. Let's go take out that nest as well. A lot of cliffs here. Okay, here are too many coal rocks to be seduced by. Okay, let's lure those two. Oh, 1000 basic tech cards. Nice. Super fast sunrise, double speed. Nest down. We have uh, a lot of that creep already. Biomass, as it's called. So yeah, I guess we'll return home. Or we could take out those nests as well. We are now in the south anyway. Okay, let's do that. I mean, I want to move kind of fast, but I should also remember it's not really a speed run, so it does not really matter how fast uh, things progress. There's even more nests down here. I guess we can take out those two from a single vantage point with our gun turrets if we get lucky with the rocks which we kinda not exactly do i'm also not sure if we have enough guns to take them out both let's take out this top one then i think i'm out of uh, i will be out of those sniper shells pretty soon Another nest. We already at 18% evolution. Let's try to stand not in exactly the line where the biters are coming from. So that at least most of our shot hit the actual nests instead of... ...any biters. Yes, that the uh, crusher and stone processing are quite slow to research, so that's another... Uh, it's quite basic, you kind of need it, but you cannot really get it that early on that fast, because the technologies are just so slow to research. So, that's another reason to go this part, with the military focus first. Alright. More goop to scoop. Yeah, we have only 19 of those magazines left. We started with 41 or 42, I think. So I guess that was the last nest we can take out now. Now I'm going to set up the, the base to collect the resources, which we can then use to build a real base. And well, after I set up the base, I will go take out more nests. Now we had a little bit of time without pollution production. We can probably see pollution is still a little bit higher than 15 here, but the cloud at the edges will uh, it will not so severely pollute the bite as we have a little bit of extra time now. 
I did not forget any gun turrets, I think. Alright, almost 10 stacks of that biomass. Let's give this conserver some coke. How is it with the rest of these? Let's just do it a little bit more precisely. I guess I could use electrical ones by now. Okay. Yeah, copper wire. And wood. Alright. These have run out as well. Theoretically, can make four more automation cores. We can exactly make those. Alright, but this is actually a lot of signs. Over 200 packs. So I guess that's going to be all right. Okay, uh, optics, right? Optics I should add to the list. Fast and further. We're almost through uh, that stuff. We could do larger containers. That is useful as well. Or engine. Engine leads to a lot of stuff. Let's add it to the list. We'll see uh, what we need and what we what we will use and what we won't use. Right, so I guess I can probably deconstruct the labs at some point. Let's try to make a smarter setup this time. Four, one, two, three, four. Let's do three. A three wide setup that is nice and compact. Okay, wait, this is not gonna work. We need the furnaces in between. Okay, again, let's not go overly big. Maybe maybe 12 minus is enough. So both the ore and the plates stack to 200. The ore and the plates stack to 200, so that is actually pretty, pretty good. We don't have that much coal. We could burn biomass actually as a 2 megajoule fuel value. And 80% fuel pollution. It's actually not that crazy then. Since it's that world, we'll collect plenty of biomass anyway. I think I'll just do that. Why not? There goes all my biomass. <laughs> Alright, and then let's put... Also like 6 on copper. Keep a small opening so that I can walk through. Do I still have enough biomass? I don't, but I guess we can also use a little bit of coal. Eh. Okay, this is gonna make copper. Let's take out some coal since we needed to make ammo. 2 megajoules, 6 megajoules, alright. So 50 coal is enough compared to 100 biomass to not have them run out at different times. Okay, attacks are gonna come from the north, the west, and the southeast, so I probably can build my gunters a little bit accordingly. Something like that. Yes, I should start them up. A random garbage pile of power lines and I still didn't power all of them. Alright. Alright. 
Let's see. Yeah, it looks like this side is not gonna generate attacks very soon. We can cut down a little bit on gun turrets over here. Uh, I guess we're gonna need to keep some in place though. Alright. Let's also just mine some coal while we wait for a little bit of copper to generate. We need to restock on ammo. Okay, not quite enough power, but that's alright. Should I do gun turrets? I guess I'll just place a line in case a small attack comes in. So we are not expecting any big attacks for at least like 10 minutes or so until the pollution cloud has a chance to spread out again. So pollution is high here again, but it will take a lot of time before it really starts to spread out uh, far again. Right, we have already two hours in the playthrough. And we still haven't got much more than a couple of mines. What else is new? I guess I'm just gonna put my pistol in the... in the spaceship, together with the ammo. So I don't get confused which gun I'm using. Alright, pretty decent production. Okay, so I guess most of the area is covered. Yeah, I think I should be good. Do I need more gun turrets? I have six. It's like 11 or something. Yeah, 11, 12. Let's make 16 because we we have crossed medium biter territory by now. We may use some grenades as well. How is it going with the fuel? Feel, feels kind of a waste, I'm not gonna lie, to uh, burn the biomass. Right, 54, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And 100 for the gun turrets. Yeah, because more or less it is, yeah, I guess so. The thing is though, uh, not uh, some of these tech cards become obsolete. It's not like Factorio where you keep using them. This basic tech card is going to become obsolete I guess as soon as uh, military and blue signs are taking over, you can see all of these tags, they don't require the basic tag card. And if you look at the end of the tag tree, you can see that even uh, blue technology is no longer in there. So that means there's a finite amount of military technology cards we will need. And I'm guessing we I'm guessing it is balanced around default settings, and we are playing that world, which means there is like twice the nest and they're at least twice as large by diameter so that's that's uh, four times as large by area so we're going to collect at least eight times as the biomass compared to vanilla uh, compared to default settings oh, it's good we didn't leave just yet apparently Alright, I guess we should take advantage of the fact that pollution is not spreading just yet. And I guess we can actually just leave up these as well. I guess 10 gun turrets. Let's go 10. Okay, 
soon as there's these three nests where it will reach here and these and this in the north we are going to go down we are actually going to explore a bit here and then take out these nests explore a bit here and then come back and then one more loop here and then we are ready to build the base hopefully <laughs> Anyway, even on default settings, Crastorio has a quite a slow start, I guess, uh, compared to vanilla. I guess it's because all the intermediates, the double price of the plates, and uh, yeah, just things being more expensive in general. So you also have to. Yeah, you, you need more assemblers, uh, you need more miners, you need more. More everything basically, more resources. Okay, a bunch of nests down here, that's good to have explored. Now you need to automate more intermediate products. Uh, all of that stuff leads to uh, quite a slow start. I'm hoping we're getting to automated red and green signs in this playthrough. So automated basic signs, red signs and green signs. So that's three technology packs. Alright. Let's see if we can find one more nest down here. Yeah, the nearest nest is... It will be good to know. The other thing Crastorio is missing in the early game is... Uh, radars. Actually, this looks quite juicy, doesn't it? Look at this. I think we can maybe just get away without doing some burner mining up here. 40. There's even coal as well. Let's do that. 60. Let's first go grab a whole bunch of coal. We will explore the area a bit. Okay, let's just speed up a bit. And maybe out a little bit too far. Further than is the intention. Okay, having the game on two times speed kinda <laughs> uh, seduces me to do things which I really shouldn't be doing, like walking out too far. Because it goes fast, but it does not really go fast. Oh, here is oil. It's not really fast, but it just feels fast because the game is on two times speed. And we are a little bit on a timer. Since the pollution will spread out, it's already reaching these again, slowly. Alright, let's put... Let's go crazy and put like... 60 burners on this coal patch for a short while. And then we run away. Let's go gorilla mining. Gorilla Guer mining, <laughs> something like that. I guess we can go even in this bottom chunk here. So first we place the whole infrastructure and only then we switch it on. Alright. Let's see how much coal we get. We start off with like 500. I guess meanwhile, okay, let's actually get this started as well. Now let's, let's put on the values to see how much pollution this generates. Yeah, we're already over a hundred in this chunk. So, but it has uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess like at least six chunks to spread to before it reaches the nearest nest. So I, I'm betting we can get away with mining a lot of coal here. I'm even gonna just... I guess we'll explore in this direction on the way back. So I guess let's speed up the game and mine more rocks here. And as soon as the pollution starts touching the nest, we are going to go back, basically. We're gonna need some stone uh, to turn into glass 
uh, to turn into sand to turn into glass later on anyway. Alright, how is it going? Over 200 pollution in this chunk. 120 is yeah, going fast, but still no nests are being polluted. There could be nests here, which I am not seeing. Yeah, this is how to mine for free. Should I make even more burners? I don't really think so. Let's make more. It's too late. It is too late for more burners. I'm wasting resources. Uh, I made one already. If I made one already, I'm committed. Okay. I'm a little bit weary to keep the game now on two times speed because of the threat of biters not still not yet polluting. I think once it spreads to this chunk we will be polluting these guys. And this chunk here as well. So this is 10, it's gonna spread as soon as it's 15. So these are gonna be first actually. I guess we have some gun turrets, we could just put down a few gun turrets. How much is in there already? Okay, first attack on the base. Okay, this has run out, that is bad. Alright, we need to we need to make our way back then. <laughs> yeah, we are just basically out of resources. So we have 60 miners up here. Now we will have 80 up here. And more and more attacks on the base. Okay, so these are definitely being polluted. Not so severely just yet. The, the values in the edge pollution chunks are not so high just yet that pollution is being spread as massively as from here to here. So I guess let's just... I guess we can just do this. That will catch the first attack. The first attack is likely to be small if it comes soon. And if it doesn't come soon, we already will be away. Okay, I have 1.7k stone. I guess that will be enough. Okay, it's getting more and more severe. You can see it's uh, start, the flickering starts to be more intense. The value before it absorbed, not not even all can be absorbed in one chunk. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think it's time to bail. With our double steel X technology, it should not take too long. It is kind of borrowed from the Warptorio strategy, isn't it? Just mine, 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 and run away. Well, I have been doing hit and mine, or mine and run, since the ultimate death roll challenge, I think. Which is where I first applied it. I think my challenge series before that didn't have mine and run. They were either not on that world, or they were Biter Island, where there was not really anywhere to run, or anywhere else to mine. Right, so let's, let's make a save. In case the game crashes, and uh, let's just let's just see uh, if we can find how many biters have been building up already, if any. Oh, here's a small group. I, I'm not really seeing seeing them on this side. Just oh, here's a small group as well. Okay, so it was not too severe just yet, but yeah, better, <laughs> better leave too soon than leave too late, if you do this strategy. Alright, I guess the base has died. Uh, not quite yet. No, it is about to die. Ah, no, it is, it is basically running on that single ship reactor. 240 kilowatts. I guess, uh, yeah, the Sentinel is... Uh, 
still showing us the area just on that so that's good okay let's try not to explore too far down we are going too far out it's not that important what exactly is here Oi. a giant copper mine we do need some copper as well we cannot mine that one though We could take some of this on the way back up. I think we could take some of this on the way back up. Yeah, let's take some of this. We're gonna do another Wartorio amount of miners, I guess. Am I not too no, I'm not too close, alright. I don't have enough furnaces. I made so many burner miners. Uh, yeah, recipes. Let's just try to get one pool into everything so it starts up and then add some more. Actually this could have inserted half stacks. I have now I have 5000 coal. It's quite nice that everything stacks to Okay, we're not going to have so much time here, it's already spreading onto the nests. Just after I start setting up. This is still spreading out onto these nests quite severely. Look at how much pollution is spreading onto these nests still. But we're already long gone, so we won't have to face the attacks. We are in separate pollution clouds. So, yeah, we are good basically. Here we can actually see the first attack group forming. And so let's just, I guess let's, maybe let's go bigger. Let's go bigger, I made 80 burner miners. Yes, we will put down our gun turrets again. We are a little bit too big to. So this was the this was the strategy which I initially had uh, planned out: is just to go mine some coal, go mine some copper, go mine some iron, and gather resources like that. I guess we can try a grenade. Grenades do 100 explosion damage. They are very dangerous. Also for yourself. If I just throw a grenade on my own face. Okay, but actually with the heavy armor it's not so bad. I did it with the light armor and I almost killed myself with like two grenades. So... Pretty bad. Okay, the bottom is also getting polluted. How much copper do we have? This is a pretty fast method of mining, by the way. Basically, we are just mining from 60 burner miners simultaneously. That is equal to 30 vanilla miners. And that is a full yellow belt. So I guess that's like 15 copper or a second. Let's, let's go. It'll take a while to deconstruct. If we're lucky we can 
get away without paying the cost of the attack again. Yeah, we're going to collect a lot of copper ore in our inventory like this as well because you need 10 copper ore before the smelting process starts. So probably going to have like a couple stacks of ore in our inventory now. Okay, we are deconstructed. I'm not following my own advice, I'm zooming out. Like that is a big attack group. But what are you going to attack guys? Well, not this mine, that's for sure. So yeah, good luck and uh, yeah, see you later, I guess. Alright. Where the heck are we, man? How far did we walk out? <laughs> well, I guess we found those nice... We found all three patches we need. Coal, iron and copper. I guess we could mine this iron too. Though not simultaneously with the coal. It is still... That is too close by each other. That won't work. I think we are done mining far out. Uh, where do we want to go? Here is some iron as well. Let's get it on the map. With, the, with those biters too. Yeah, we cannot mine that either. Where do we need to go? Okay, up to the left. Didn't I say something about taking out these nests? I think I did, didn't I? At least this one. Wasn't that the whole reason we set out? Instead of mining ore everywhere. Like illegal mining operations. Alright, I guess... We can approach from the left side. It's also the most visible side. Here we have the bar, the north, because of the screen. And here we often have that uh, description. So this is visually the best side to attack from. We are 22% evolution. Maybe we can spot some medium snappers already. All right, here we go. So the spawn chance now 2% medium biter, 2% medium snapper, and still yeah, mostly small biter still. No spitters just yet. That will only happen at 25% evolution. Just the worms to take out and the stones. <laughs> okay, that's another nest cleared. Scoop the goop. That's a... Uh, cut down these broken rocks, because why not? Should we take out those guys as well? I guess... Yeah, let's do that. Why not? We are, not, we are here now. We have the ammo. We can strategi strategically position ourselves on top of this cliff, actually. Now, there is a strategic position. Okay, there's a medium biter. Let's snipe him. Oh. 
Oh yeah, first medium biter killed at 2 hours and 26 minutes. Let's speed it up again, because yeah, like I said, combat is not the strongest point. Basically, if you follow this method, there's just no skill involved. The problem with it is, it is by far the easiest and most reliable and, I guess, cheapest method as well. So, yeah, not really much incentive to, uh, to do something else. Alright. Mr. Worm. Scoop. The purple goop from the purple ground is a bit hard to see. I guess we still have enough to take out this nest as well. We can actually fill up a, a bit again. Let's make a bit extra. Okay, this is a perfect angle, nothing in the way. 10 gun turrets, will it still be enough? That's a good question. At some point, uh, the, the pressure from all the biters spawning in is gonna be a bit higher. And then the strategy becomes either a lot more expensive. Or... Wait, we are in range of a turn. Let's take him out first then. Yeah, it's gonna be, the pressure's gonna become a lot higher, especially with uh, a lot of medium biters and medium snappers uh, spawning in. I haven't spotted a medium snapper just yet, but we are also getting into spitter territory now. We have cost 25% evolution. Taking out all these nests is really taking a toll. Can I just kill that nest already? Okay. So yeah, this is this is uh, mostly why I installed the uh, the speed up the speed up mod for the walking around and mostly for this uh, specific type of combat because at at real speed it is just super tedious. Dual streaming to YouTube. Well, I guess once I get a little bit more like used to the streaming stuff, and I have a, a reliable uh, setup that I don't need to take down all the time, then uh, I might consider it. But right now, I was pretty worried about. There's still a worm somewhere. I was pretty worried about my internet connection. And as you saw at the beginning of the stream, it, it cut out once or twice. The bitrate was also not great. And there's a bit more yeah, like pressure, I would say, to, to uh, stream well when I'm on YouTube, since the channel is so big. While here on Twitch, I'm, I'm a nobody, basically. I can just do whatever I want. Yeah, it's going pretty well, uh, pretty well now. We're pretty glad with uh, that. Alright, let's not, not get too carried away. There is water. I always want to know where the water borders are, though. Okay, let's meet this water border here as well. There's biters. Let's not get followed by double speed biters. I guess we can sneak over the top here. Can actually walk through the water, through the shallows. Let's collect a little bit more wood. So, did any of you play through Crastorio yourself already? Quite curious. Just want to know if I'm being. Uh, really slow, or if this is normal. Right, I 
still have tech cards in here, just a couple. 70. Okay, larger containers, fluid handling. Started a playthrough, but never progressed. Normally it's a slow spa. Completed. Way slower. Alright. It does it does feel quite slow, just uh, no matter uh, no matter what you try, it just feels quite slow. Uh, I don't know. Okay, now we have a decent amount of resources, so let's do a little bit of bulk stuff. Completed the two. Get to air filter. Yeah, I saw the technology too. That was the other reason why I didn't want to play Crastorio. So... The thing is, somewhere deep, not that deep down the tech tree, there's a technology of air purification. And you can basically build uh, pollution absorbers, which only cause these cheap filters, this coal, steel and plastic. And I think they last for like eight minutes or six minutes or something like that per piece. So. This basically sucks the pollution right off the air, and what that means is basically you can neutralize the full pollution of your, of your factory by using those, right? I mean, you can just count. I have, let's say I have like 12 miners in this chunk. Each miner has 7.5 pollution. So that's like 90 pollution or something, approximately. Okay, so I built two of those air, air purifiers and the pollution of the mine is neutralized. You can do that with your whole factory and there is there will be no more pollution output at all it's like you're playing with pollution off so that is uh that is actually going to be my goal for this playthrough yeah so yeah the idea uh, the idea behind this dead world playthrough is because of the air purification technology i would uh, i thought it would be nice to build a factory where we just know now we need to take out a lot of biters we need to kill them just to get started but once we have the air purification i'm not going to take out any more biters and i am planning to let them expand back into the factory for as far as they will go and because it's that world evolution progresses fast so we good, should get a pretty high expansion rate going uh, later on in the playthrough so we should see perhaps biters actually in our factory so that is the secret, the secret uh, plan for this playthrough. We live together with the biters in this factory, which will, uh, which will produce no pollution at all. Will it work? I don't know, but I think it's uh, maybe finally time to get up. A little bit more of that. Do I have the coal mines? I still have the coal mine actually. So I should have collected even more coal. Ah yeah, you can recycle them as well, right? So you can just wash them in water or something. And you can mostly get them back. So once you have a... The main problem of those things to me sounds like it will be if you need to fill them by hand you just need to insert a lot of them right you need to bring a lot of pollution filters so that you don't need to run around refilling pollution filters all the time uh, and uh, to get to logistics bots with requester chest that is uh, hidden much further away so this is just a couple blue tags, one, two, three blue tags and you're there. Uh, you need to get oil as well because they require plastics, I think. Yeah, plastics. But by the time you uh, you want to automate that, you need requester chest and that is yellow technology. That is quite a bit further down the tech tree. So, plus you need to set up the whole network and stuff. Right, 
I think this is going to be the last technology we research in this factory. I think I have enough. We don't need any fluid handling just yet. Uh, what do we need? Do we need this? I don't think we need these just yet either. I don't think we need any of that stuff. We can wait until we have science automated, I think. Alright. So now the plan. We need to take out some... Ah, we should have taken out these two nest soups. Okay, so the pollution cloud is... Okay, we ran out of coal, right? Uh, okay, okay, let's grab the coal. After we grab the coal, we will fill the coal in the furnaces. Ooh, the first time we have that sound. I guess it's alright. It's always nice, the first time you get the inventory full sound. It took a full 2 hours and almost 40 minutes to get it. Right. So now we're going to apply a concept from the 100% uh, evolution playthrough. Where we tried to go get There is no spoon but failed, but we got uh, no time for chat chat, the 15 hour achievement. So we're going to keep this production going all the time while we are away and when we're back we're going to uh, convert it into stuff we need to build the base basically. Okay, I, I guess technically we could keep research going then, right? If we're gonna keep it up anyway. Eh, eh. Okay, let's get a couple of those automation cores. Uh, automation cores, we can automate those. More iron into here. More iron into beams. Copper. I think we need mostly pure copper. Well, that's automation cores. Can we get some blank tech cards? I guess I can handcraft those. And we need copper cable and wood. Of course, wood, my nemesis. Okay, we still have a lot of wood here. I guess we just do full stacks. That will run for long enough. Automation course. I guess I should have maybe automated these as well. Ah, they're fast to craft. I think we can. We are fine. Okay, so let's stop taking absolutely everything. I guess we're going this way first since we are polluting these guys but not these guys yet. We will be polluting those guys soon as well but let's run first this way. We have our 10 gun turrets, we have our uh, rifle ammo, let's complete that to... I should put these in. Let's complete that to 100 again. 100 is a good amount to have. As well as 100 bullets, perhaps we can go 200 even. Oh, I should put in the automation cores as well. Okay, that's gonna create another 100 signs, so we can get fluid handling. Maybe we can get fluid chemistry. The new technology. It allows us to split sand into some chemical elements. I think that is the fastest way to get fuel for the car. Not entirely sure about that. I think you need oil processing and oil anyway. Alright, yeah, they're already gathering for the attack, so... Okay, we can make a single base station here. Should not trigger those guys just yet. Home hopper. Alright, it didn't trigger the whole nest just yet, so that's good. I think I want to go uh, a little bit of a furnace defense. 
Right, here we go. Double speed. Okay, I triggered it myself. Let's go get get all the guys. That was not a good move. Okay, I um, should not go too far out. So the, the range on this thing is incredible. You can shoot off the screen on the north side. Or at least on the south side. You can shoot as far as your hotbar is and further. You should really focus down one nest at a time. So they stop spawning as early as possible. Alright. This is too fast, I cannot control my mouse that fast. Okay, I think that's all the nests. I just need to take out a bunch of worms. And scoop the boot. There is a lot of worms in this nest, man. That's a rock. Don't die at double speed. I don't. I don't even uh, have fish. I used to be a big fish eater, but then I thought it was too cheesy, my fish. <laughs> Perhaps I'm eating the wrong kind of fish. 680 goops here. Not, not every one of those goops transforms into biomass. Yeah, but still we got almost a line back already. Yeah, I watched uh, Dosh's playthrough too of Crastorio. It's pretty nice. All of his videos are pretty nice actually. And I do like that format as well, to have a, a, whole, a whole playthrough in a single video. This is, I sometimes try something like that as well, but I don't know, I just cannot keep things. <laughs> I cannot keep things uh, concise enough, basically, that's my problem. So I always get distracted on tangents and I want to show the really cool sequences and stuff. So I, whenever I make a super cut of one of, of our whole series in a playthrough, it's like 10 hours or something. That's not true, I have like, like 3 hour ones. Oh, medium snapper. I have like 3 hour playthroughs as well, but... Yeah, the, the ultimate death world challenge supercut was so long it didn't even fit into a single video. The maximum is like 11 hours and 50 minutes. 11 hours 55 I think, it didn't fit so I had to cut my one movie supercut into two parts. <laughs> That's just stupid. But my original ones, the shorter playthroughs I did like uh, Biter Island, they did fit in like three and a half hours and stuff. I don't know why I'm killing this nest. I think this is pretty far out, if I'm not mistaken. Just getting into the mindless mode. Yeah, that's too far away. We need to move this base. So yeah, you, you, can, you can definitely say that... Castorio has really buffed the Gunter, that's right. I mean, I have one 
level of damage upgrade. And I'm absolutely demolishing like 30% evolution biters and armor biters. Okay, we're gonna need more. Some more bullets and some more anti-material as well. I guess this is not too bad to take out. It is pretty close to the edge of the pollution cloud. Okay, we're getting the me mouse over. We have 7% medium snappers spawning already. It's getting, it's getting night, but I'll try to catch one in the daylight to get a closer look at its stats. Also, this nest is quite big, so it spawns a lot of biters continuously. And the biters are becoming more robust. Let's try to focus down the nests. I guess you can see the, the ones which are medium snappers, they are quite the resistant. Uh, it already starts to get more difficult, right? I guess you can see that I'm struggling a little bit more already. Finally, they start to group up somewhere far away. It means I get a clear shot on the nests. It also means I probably should throw a grenade when they come, because they will overwhelm my turrets. Here we have medium snappers. Yeah, they are pretty robust. Let's see if we can get a mouse over on the stats. How much physical this is? Oh, also only four. They just have 200 hit points. Only 4 physical resistance, that's the same as medium biters. Nothing much more armored about that, man. Well, I guess... I guess they have a higher percentage armor bonus. Yeah, not too armored, those biters. So, so this is how it would look if we would play it on one time speed. Like... Pinching down the nests. Right, I guess. Let's see, can we see? Right, there's 200 plates in there, so the plates are full, but the mines will still fill up these to 200 ore. So we will be back in time to empty that out, and the furnaces are faster than the mines in uh, Crastorio. So production will keep going on, and then we can transform that stuff into a base once we are ready with clearing some space for our pollution. This is as far as we're gonna go. By the way, does anyone know what the, the jackhammer is for? I, it's also apparently for something, but I haven't figured out yet for what exactly that is. Uh, it does not seem to work on rocks or coal rocks or something. Okay, I, I guess let's run back on high speed now. Clearing tiles. I like, like concrete and stuff. Landfill. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe you can deconstruct landfill. I think that's coming to the expansion of Factorio 2, the ability to deconstruct landfill, though. That's going to be interesting. Look, we have over 2000 biomass again. Not going to smelt it away this time. Let's empty out these. Uh, empty out these, I guess. Let's craft more stuff while we go for the next round. 
don't know, we don't actually need that much copper wire, I think. Let's use the recipe book for once. Copper cable, I think it's called, actually. Um, copper cable item is used in 25 things. Wind turbine sentinel, blank tech car, that's important. Stuff, 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 stuff. Stuff, 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 basic tech cards. Okay, so blank tech cards, basic tech cards. And for the rest, only in s some sort of... Uh, and the crusher for the stone. Uh, electronic circuits. Okay, advanced. Okay, they are pretty important, but later on. Later on. Labs. Okay, what about electronic circuits? They are used in 45 different things. Modules, chain stops. Let's see if we can. Okay, logistics tech card. That's important. Assembling machine. Modules. Splitters. Gas. Fast and server. Advanced circuits. Yeah, okay. But yeah, it looks like I don't really need to make much more. Um, how is these? 100 fuel still. Looks like we don't really need to make much more copper cable as of now. I uh, don't know why I emptied out those, but alright. I guess our pollution is reaching there again. So now we go basically counterclockwise back over here. And take out all of them. Not all, but take out some of those nests and that's it. That, there I'm calling it. Once those are gone, we will start to build the base biters or not. Okay, let's research towards fluid handling. As I should maybe make some of these blank tech cards. With iron. Do I have any wood? Of course I don't have any wood. As I could make a greenhouse already. I think it's too much work to make a greenhouse. Just for a little bit of of tech. Let's just chop a couple. Okay, so we also need some of these automation cores to keep red signs going. We can just chop a little bit of wood from over here. I have a cool plant for the power plant though. It's probably going to be a power plant like you have not seen before. research optics I could make some lamps now indeed so we will need to power them somehow oh we need glass for lamps of course we need glass for lamps I guess that makes sense but <laughs> yeah okay that should be enough wood to get us through two more technologies That's also going to be enough automation cores to make those. So I keep the rest on me. This is also the last of the technology we'll make here. Once this is done, no more technology, real base time. Okay, again, empty out furnaces, handcraft however much ammo we need, which is going to be a lot. I think we need to take some more coal. Now we can make uh, tons and tons of bullets. bit much fluid handling I said I should get that cool did I get it already I, I got that thing already all right so then what else is there to get what is useful I guess we can go oil process let's get this technology out of the way 
Sentinel is absolutely useless. Shelter is absolutely useless. Gate, useless. Oil processing, not useless. Let's go oil processing. We don't need it just yet, but yeah. I'm getting caught up, man. Getting caught up. Okay, where, where are we going? We are going out here. We're gonna clear. I think we're gonna leave those alone. Those are quite big as well. These three, these three. That is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna build a base. Let's go. Super speed engaged. Okay, let's go a little bit less super speed. Ten gunters only. Maybe I should make a couple more. Just put them in a line. Again, I'm a little bit late with making my, my ammo. I guess, oh well. Uh, yeah, speed up, here we go. One thousand automation tech cards, not too bad. Kinda of sorry, this is quite repetitive gameplay, but man, it's that world, man. <laughs> Cannot really do too much about it. Okay, what is next? Next is this nest. I guess we go scoopy scoop first. I guess we just go from the south since this area is open here. Hyper speed. I have full trust in my gun turrets. If something goes wrong, I will die. I didn't save in I don't know how long. Pretty long. Okay, I think I will Let's go back to normal fast speed. The spitters are starting to play a role. They can target me from further away. That is quite a large group. I think they are coming from the nest one nest higher up as well okay let's actually eat with some grenades here that looks quite scary yeah they're coming from the nest one higher up as well okay so they are starting to get some shots in on us. Can we? <laughs> yeah, we can deconstruct, okay. We cannot scoop up that group just yet. I think we need to find a different angle to attack these guys. Yeah, there's basically two nests almost grown together. We now already have 10% medium snapper and 14% medium bite response. So that is already starting to be a bit more dangerous which is also one of the reasons why we need to do this early if we wait too long we're taking them out the bite has just become too dangerous
Yeah, let's not go super speed. I don't want to kill myself doing this after not saving for I don't know how long. I play without auto save because it just ruins. It always comes in the most annoying moments for uh, when you're filming video material. So I have gotten into the habit of making like 600 saves myself, but not when I'm live streaming apparently. <laughs> And we just play two hours without making a single save, risking game crashes and whatever. Oh, I was reading the chat, <laughs> the chat while <laughs> while shooting. Nothing, basically. Okay. Um, I think I watched Biter Island Supercut like 15 times. <laughs> yeah, it's really I like the I like the earlier videos I did without um, without the voiceover as well, where I could really just try to tell the story with uh, with the music as well as with the help of some text over. But it would. It gives a really nice atmosphere. The um, it gives a nice atmosphere if you don't have a an annoying voice which constantly blabbers through the nice atmosphere of the game, and especially with such an amazing soundtrack as Factorio has, with the uh, very different tracks which uh, are suited like for uh, all kinds of different uh, occasions. Though I understand most people like the the voice the voice playthrough the most, or at least they they do the uh, they have the best performance on YouTube, I guess. And and I like them as well, you know. For a playthrough like the Ultimate Death World Challenge, I started doing voiceover not because I thought it would be more popular, but because it was just too much information to convey in too short of a time. And it was just not possible to do that with uh, text over. So it was just too much to say and not enough time to do it. A problem which I now also sometimes seem to have with uh, <coughs> with uh, with my voice to uh, play truths. But yeah, that's when I, when I started doing it. And after I started doing it, I... It requires a different workflow, a different style of recording even for some parts. So I just kept uh, doing it. I might make another... Uh, oi, oi, oi. I might make another ambient only... Uh, video at some point. But for now, I know, I like the voice ones as well. It, it gives you the opportunity to go more in depth about strategy. To... Uh, to highlight like some quirky gameplay mechanics which uh, you just cannot really do with text because it just takes too much time like the, the it takes like 10 seconds to speak like three lines of voice but you need at least like half a minute to do it with text especially since you need to share your eyeball attention between the text and the actual gameplay which is not too ideal so yeah both both have their merits I still like the the old the old videos as well though. I gotta start being a bit more tactical about avoiding the biter attacks. Alright, this one is down as well. One more to go and then we can get to building a real base. Like a normal person. Play on one time speed again like a normal person. Even more worms. My view on C block. Well, I did watch, watch Dosh's playthrough and I am not sure, <laughs> I 
I want to make a series about that because it would take me two years not to complete the playthrough but to complete the series. <laughs> That's a bit too much I think. Yeah, I do try to mix in some atmospheric parts like uh, I think I did a pretty good job of that in the Ultimate Death World Challenge as well. Where there were some atmospheric parts during the initial biter mayhem, the small biter mayhem, when we barely had a base. And also later with these Spidertron battles, which uh, were pretty easy on a gameplay level, but were pretty epic on a, like a story level, I guess. So I, I liked how I edited those as well, the, uh, the Spidertron battles. Yeah, I'm just going to heat a little bit the chat. I guess I can just two times speed as well. So yeah, I think C, C block is just too crazy for my video style. It would it would just take too long. If a voice over text so much to learn. Yeah, that's the point, right? But voiceover you can get a lot more information across. And my videos are like, I don't know, I, I tend to exp maybe to explain even too much stuff in my videos. Oh, I need to refill some energy. Oh, that was heavy. Yeah, I, I like to explain a lot of stuff uh, while I'm playing. Like, was there really a need to go into that much detail to explain the... Um, Cannot seem to shoot through the biters. Like the like the background map generation mechanics, right? I could have just said map generation is 20 chunks away from the player, and I could have been done with it. But yeah, I like to go in a lot of details sometimes. <laughs> Too much detail. I think the coast is clear on this nest as well. There's few enough nests left that they cannot really send anything significant anymore. Yeah, so sometimes I like to think about making like single videos of uh, of an entire playthrough. On the other hand, I have my own style, you know, which uh, is more extensive, more like more cinematic in a way, you know. Like uh, I do, I do care a lot about uh, filming it, filming stuff, and getting a pretty picture to go along with it instead of just some part of the just some part of the playthrough I randomly record. I often, uh, that's that's the other reason I make 600 saves, it's to uh, to go back and uh, film, refilm stuff the exact way I wanted to. Like, uh, without too much scrolling and zooming like this all the time, or not knowing what to do. I like to have some, some neat shots in there as well. Alright, this is the really, really last nest. Hey, something gets destroyed. Okay, we are getting attacked at the coal. There's an expansion here. Look at that pollution here, yeah, there's an expansion. Okay, we need to deal with that as well. Because that's going to generate a lot of biters. It's already doing that right now. And the coal mine is not... Not suited to deal with that. I'm going to shoot this nest down at one time speed. I don't actually know why to react to the cold situation like I'm like two minutes of walking away so not really a reason to do that so we get numerous of those big guys right now the big snappers they are pretty scary they do a lot of damage they are also slow not like the medium biters the medium biters are super fast 
Okay, let's go to time speed. Right, and suddenly, before killing, we were still in the small biter era. Now we're over 40% evolution, so we get medium spitters already, and soon we'll start to have big biters and stuff. Still, it's not really a problem because. It's not really a problem because the gun turrets are so strong, right? Alright. There's a bunch of biters still here. And worms, apparently. Again, some biters stuck on our hook. I don't really feel... Oh, I cannot... Uh, I cannot collect creep. So I cannot collect it if there's biters nearby. I guess that makes sense. Can I just run with a power armor through the nest and scoop it up? That is all of them. Let's walk back to this location before the coal mine gets absolutely destroyed. Enjoy the old videos. Som yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the uh, a few different personalities are in the video. The uh, talking mic, editing mic and uh, playing mic and they never seem to agree much with each other. Especially editing might, he gets the last word, obviously. The Dead World Artillery Train. Oh, wait, wait. I'm, all <laughs> I'm reading chat, I'm almost running into this nest. Alright, not too big just yet. Let's kill these guys as well. We got some medium worms in there, we can show them off as well. I thought they would be triggered by these guns, but apparently not just quite yet. Right, I guess let's throw a grenade. Yeah, sometimes I feel like some of some of my videos turn out almost more like a tutorial on something than an actual part of the playthrough like for instance when i did the, the stuff about the in the ultimate death world challenge where i built the logistics network with the buffer chest system that one almost felt more like a like a tutorial <laughs> than a than a playthrough right medium arms 950 health so that's gonna take a bunch of bullets to shoot down i cannot see them the expansions are more spread out than the expansions are more spread out than the usual nest so oh that is probably i ah, still out of range he's strategically hiding behind that coal rock Alright, is that all? Still see one red dot on the map. There's a small biter, alright. Alright, let's, let's save. It is 3 hours 30. 3 hours 30 and area is clear. Time for base. Finally. Now we're going to do the part which normal people do, which is uh, building a base in Factorio after 3.5 hours.
Okay. That's. I always forget to. This is even I forget it in my when I even when I want to film cinematic shots. I always have that blinking tech light in the corner. I just don't see it. I don't know why. I just don't see it. All right. We have definitely got enough coal. Okay, we need to pick up those chests too. Preferably before biters come to attack them. So are we actually still polluting any biter nest? No. There's a flat line. Biter and spitter spawners are zero. Alright, so I guess we are safe. Yeah, like almost a chest full of biter goop already. Okay, let's pick up those chests and then we can start like planning a base I guess. Ah, of course. How many chests? How many stacks? Yeah, a lot of stacks. Alright, I guess we are going to set up an area around. Let's, let's put that shelter down somewhere here maybe. Put in the coal. We can pick up the rest of the coal. I guess we are still going to put it in the shelter. Okay, by this time the miners are... Everything is fully full. We can still keep it going. 104 coal in the furnace. Alright. Let's save again. I may load the save uh, after we plan. So we are going to get to the planning part. I will take a quick break though. Uh, I'll be back in about five minutes.
All right, we are back. So I guess you could say this was like part one. That would be a good a good part one. Basically surviving the opening and making some space for yourself, getting to military too, getting to gun turrets. I mean, it wasn't the perfect strategy. I <laughs> kind of failed with the, with the keep the base going part. I had to deconstruct it at some point. It was just too much. But now we can keep it going. While we, I guess we are first going to like make a general layout plan. What is going to go where. And then we will... Um, did I leave a chest here? No. Then we will uh, start, I guess, with the power plant. Okay, so it is quite possible we are getting some attacks down here. I want to make sure the spaceship survives. I probably should not put my gun turrets directly against the spaceship, but oh well. I don't think we're gonna get big attacks anytime soon. It has to spread out pretty far. Look at that early game pollution, it's still there, man. It dissipates so slowly, especially in Crastorio. Right, um our stuff we have we have some stuff. We gotta make a plan. So what are those purple dots up in the north? Uh, this is one of the new resources. This is the Immer site. So we have three new resources compared to vanilla. It's Immer site, mineral water, which is so, some sort of water or oil, I guess. And we've got rare metals. So there's three new resources to play with later on. All right. So in general, what I like to do when I don't really know a mod uh, that well yet is to go for sort of a main bus style and I want to give the spaceship like a cent central place so I usually start just by planning out a part I don't have any bricks just yet so let's say a four wide part which like goes directly next to the spaceship in some way I guess we are going to get rid of this thing at some point. So perhaps it could be something like this. Then the shadow is exactly next to the part. So that is highlighted. So how does this end up? The problem with this map is though, I don't know how long the main bus is going to be, but we've got this lake over here. We also got iron. I don't want to go down too much. All right, so let's check it out. If we go this way. So the bus part is going to be above the part. And the assembler part is going to be below. So we're going to have a bunch of belts and assemblers. Basically I like a main bus because uh, it is very flexible, right? You don't know what you need and what quantity and you can just add more, add more, add more. And the resource flow is very logical. I think we're gonna be good with this space. Like there's this much space, so we have we have this much space for belts basically. I think that's gonna be good enough. I hope we reach cliff explosives because before we come this far out. Alright, the planning phase has finally begun. So let's if we go up here, how does that line up? Looks like we are going to exactly-ish skirt past those resource patches. They are going to run out anyway, so it's not really that important. It is going to help a lot with the walking speed though. Looks like we go exactly next to the... It's like it's meant to be. Exactly next to the lake here. Alright, so where are we going to make power? So I guess if the main bus is going to be here... We could theoretically do oil processing on this like peninsula over here and then just pipe it back to the bus. Smelting 
is going to be close to the patches somewhere over here. Let's do smelting. Smelting. Over here is uh, bus. Let's do it on the pot. So I guess bus. Something like this. Right. Here we can have like oil processing. That's going to be a lot later in the game. This looks nice area. There's plenty of space to do all what you need and it won't interfere with anything thing else. Also there's oil right here, so that's not too far off. Not really thinking too far ahead just yet. Probably it's just going to be a temporary base up to blue signs and then we probably have to scale up anyway. But who knows what will happen. Right, so if this is going to be the bus area, we're going to need some assemblers down here. Let's see how much space we have. There's seven, eight assemblers. They could possibly go like 16 deep and stay above the lake, so that is excellent. No real obstacles in the way, except the iron. We can build over. It's not a sin to build over ore patches. It kinda is though. <laughs> but if we have to do it, we have to do it. Oil is not infinite. Each patch has a maximum output and then it dies. Yeah, I already noticed this is not like percent, but 746k. So after we get that amount of oil, I presume. Uh, we are, uh, yeah, it's going to just run out, right? It's like the water, it has a fixed amount. A large amount, but actually I don't know if it's such a large amount. Fluid amounts go down a lot faster than, uh, than ore amounts. Right, so I guess we could have power over here, then next to the lake. My power plant is going to be quite large, so I need a large area for it. I don't know if it's going to be large enough already here, but we can try. I could do power here as well, but I don't know. But I think this will be more advantageous in blocking pollution, because we're going to use those greenhouses for the power plant. So smelting here, it will block all this pollution from the smelting to reach these nests over here. Yeah, I think we're going to do something like that. <laughs> Alright, I need to make a crusher, because we're going to start off on those. Uh, so do I want to reload 10 minutes? Maybe I do want to reload. I didn't do anything just yet, so let's load it up. No, let's, let's just continue. Who cares? Who cares? Alright, I'm going to need power. I have power line coming here. Okay, most of my stone is up there. I probably need to go get some. I'm going to need one of these crusher things. Furnaces, coal. I need to pick up some coal as well. We have coal here though. Right, we can empty the furnaces again because we spend a lot of time just talking. Make sure production keeps going. Keep making all this stuff. And I guess... We have an offshore pump already. How many of these we have here? Eight. Let's go up to ten. Okay, we're gonna need pipes actually. Because we're gonna make a power plant. We need a lot of pipes. So we can make those over here. Lights. I can still not make lights. I don't have glass just yet. We're gonna have glass pretty soon though. Alright. I guess we could be automating some of those automation cores as well. Or like making some of those. Uh, 
and we need stone to make into glass I guess let's put the machine gun away for now too, we don't really need it we just, just clearing out my inventory a little bit all we can take from down there Let's empty these out one last time so they keep going. Probably should be making gun turrets. F. I don't have more assemblers. Actually, I put them down here. Let's take these so I can make stuff on location. I'll just make all my wood into power lines. Probably have to defend myself a little bit as well. Okay, so we have power. We have a crusher. Look at how look at the size of this thing. And this thing crushes stone into sand and makes a lot of pollution doing so. 20 pollution a minute. I'll just put down a couple of these furnaces so we can actually smelt the sand. Alright, let's put down some chests as well. We can just put away some stuff. That's not those, I think we're gonna need those. Alright, glass. Glass is something new. I'm gonna need it for the greenhouses. Alright, I want to just make a single greenhouse so I can start laying some stuff out. Let's just make some boilers and steam engines. I'm gonna need. I guess we will need some burner inserters. I guess we should be making like inserter parts. So every inserter requires a new intermediate product, uh, the inserter part, which is basically four sticks and four gears. So inserters are quite expensive. But we have a lot of iron gears and iron sticks at the moment. Alright, can we make a greenhouse? No, because we require wood of all things. Alright, that is a problem which is gonna solve itself now. Okay, we can make a greenhouse. Let's make sure we can make uh, like a couple more. 20 wood a pop. On the part, it has to go anyway. Let's get 80 wood so we can make 5 greenhouses to start off with. And that is the last wood we'll have to chop manually ever. And of course we still need to clear it out sometimes, but alright. Okay, that's five greenhouses. So what is the plan then? The plan is to get this greenhouse. The greenhouse makes wood, right? And it takes only water to do so. Alright, now I need to... I need to calculate a bit. Uh, okay, let's see. This water pump. Water pump, pumping speed 1250 a second. Requires 20 kilowatts, so that's exactly one windmill. So we can move this power pump, this one to over here somewhere. 
and put the windmill there. Then the greenhouse. It makes wood. It takes 60 seconds and it takes 200 water. So that's 3.33 wood, 3.33 uh, water a second, right? No, yeah, 3.33 water a second. Right, it makes wood. How much wood does it make? 40 wood. So that's two thirds of a wood per second. Then the boiler. The boiler has a maximum consumption of one and a half megawatts. And the wood has a full fuel value of 1.25 mega megajoules. So if those were equal, we would need one wood per second, but it looks like we need a little bit more than one wood per second, like 1.2 wood per second to make this at full speed with two steam engines. <coughs> so it's just the same, one and a half megawatts, 750 kilowatts. So this is the same ratio, they're different numbers though. In vanilla it's 900 kilowatts for a steam engine. Alright, so we cannot do that, but what about if we only use half? Then it would consume 750 kilowatts, which is the same as a steam engine. And this <coughs> uh, wood has a fuel value of 1.25. So this thing would eat up on full speed, 1.5 megawatts, 1.25. I'm getting lost in my own thoughts. All right, one and a half megawatts. That requires one wood, 1.2 wood a second. This thing generates 0 0.66 woods per second. So if we halve that, this requires only 0 0.6 wood per second, which is Produced by this thing plus 0 0.06 extra. Okay, this, this will work. I'm pretty sure this will work. And to make sure the, the thing keeps producing all the time. Let's output in a chest. And then we input in the boiler. And then in the steam engine. Right, so this generates 0 0.66 wood a second. And this eats up, yeah, 0 0.6 wood per second. Okay, I think that's good. This is going to outproduce this thing. And this is going to create 10 pollution a minute because it has only one steam engine instead of two. So 10 pollution a minute when it's on maximum speed. And this thing is going to eat up five pollution a minute all the time. So as long as we are using only half the capacity of the steam engines, this power plant is going to be completely pollution neutral, right? Because if you are only using 375 kilowatts of the steam engine, half the capacity, this is producing only 5 pollution a minute, and this is absorbing 5 pollution a minute. So then we would have a neutral, pollution neutral power plant completely before air purification even. Oh, that's pretty neat. Right. Then the next thing is, how, how, how much of this can we run on a single power, uh, on a single pump? This thing produces 1250 water. This consumes 20 water a second, but it only consumes 10 water a second. Because we are going to be half, halving the capacity, only one steam engine. So that this always outproduces the need of the boiler. So that's only 10 water a second, and this was like 3.2. 33. So one of these units, 13.33 water a second. So this is 40 water a second. That means this is going to be 80, 120, and 200 water a second. That is a lot of... Is that right?
Okay, that seems like a, it seems like it's going to be a lot as it right. 200 water a second. Ah, greenhouse power consumption is what of the steam engine? Uh, looks like 150 kilowatts and this can produce 750. So it's like uh, a fifth. So one fifth of the power will go into here. And then three tenths of the power will be available for the base without generating pollution. And then another five tenths of its power will be available for the base with generating pollution. So actually it may, it may not be pollution neutral at all. Uh, yeah, once we go above half capacity, it's, it's gonna output pollution. So there goes the idea of the pollution barrier. So I guess we just build this out as much as we can before doing anything else. Um, right. This is really 3.33 water a second. This is really 10 water a second. Yeah, 1340. So this is 200. Let's see if we flip it. That's going to be 400 water a second. We already have 30 greenhouses. How about... I guess we cannot really go over the uranium patch. And maybe we can. There's going to be 50 greenhouses. Okay. 40. Every tree is 40. If we go 48... No wait, let's go 60. There's gonna be 60 greenhouses. That's a huge power plant setup, man. 60 greenhouses. And every tree is 40 water a second. So that's gonna be 400 water a second for 30. 800 water a second for 60. We still have not reached the limits of this thing. I think we're just gonna go like, let's go 50 or something. It's just, it's getting too ridiculous, man. I'm not going to spend two hours building out this power plant before doing anything else. Let's cancel the construction. <coughs> okay, how much is this? We are at 42. This is going to be like 50. 50 of these, 50 times 750, is 37.5 megawatts. That's actually the same power output as a vanilla, almost the same power output as a vanilla base. Vanilla does 36 megawatts on a single pump. Here we are doing 37.5 megawatts, be it with slightly more steam engines. It fits neatly between the water and the uranium patch. Makes a nice barrier here. I, I guess we'll do something like this. Okay, so now how are we going to align this? Let's cut it. And it is night time, so that's not ideal. Perhaps we can align it like in the middle of this, like so. Here is like the chunk border. So we have like a double white chunk border. This is so big, I cannot even see it in my screen, man. So that would mean something like this. Okay, there is the water here, which blocks some of that. Okay, how, how about if we just go in the center of the chunk? Wait. Okay, let's copy just a single line. Okay, how does it line up in one chunk? It sticks one tile over the edge, but all of the polluting stuff is inside the chunk. So this makes pollution, this takes pollution, and this is neutral. I guess we could, if we want to keep, the, we can do it like this, right? This would be exactly in this chunk still. So we have at least one of those in this chunk. We can still have the part, and then we just connect the rest to that, however far it may be. That's pretty far. Okay, we're going to have a cliff here, but we can just ignore that. We can work around that. Alright, so I guess we're going to need 
50 greenhouses, 50 steam engines, and 50 uh, other things. 50 of everything, basically. Okay, let's start making 50 chests plus a couple extra. Uh, we have 10, 20 of these because we have 10 up here. So we need, I guess this is full again. Yes, yeah, filling up again. Um, yeah, let's just start making stuff while this thing is not in the way. Problem is we can expect biters at some moment, I guess. We do also don't know if there's expansions right on the edge. So I guess I should leave behind some gun turrets. Attacks are not going to be big because we're not really polluting big at the moment. We can smelt some glass while we are away. And okay, 50 chests. I think we're gonna need a hundred burner inserters then. Still have some over here, right? Eight, ten. Is it gonna be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100? Uh, chests, we're gonna need 30 more of these. 30 more of these. We can make it all without intermediate stuff, that is awesome. And 30 of these, that's gonna require wood. So I guess we're gonna start crafting that once we actually Let's actually build those greenhouses already. They can start producing wood. Now we're gonna need to clear out the area as well. Um, we didn't do the power network just yet. I guess let's put one here that powers the greenhouse. Put one here maybe. That powers the steam engine. And we get like a pattern going. This is gonna look okay. Uh, then we just need to put water here. Okay, so we're gonna need that water pump, or, or for now, we just steal that that's a bit hacky but i don't have underground pipes and i am already handcrafting stuff that's gonna annoy any incoming biters so let's do this and then we can go pick up i guess we need to refuel the furnaces I think we are still vastly outproducing plates and stuff according to the rate we are actually going to use it, but oh well. Better to have a little bit too much than too little. Those power poles <laughs> tricked, tricked my OCD. Which ones? I hope it's the, these ones. This is gonna look nice, man. We're gonna do it the other way. It will look nice and symmetric. Nice little parallelograms all the way down. Not everything needs to be rectangles, man. Now we can make more greenhouses.
Yeah, it's going to require a lot of iron beams, a lot of automation cores. We kind of have all of that stuff. Just going to keep making glass and we need to keep making wood. And then we can... I guess we'll just do it by the five so we can... We don't need to spend too much time walking. So the burner and cells are also just going to power themselves. Which is nice. And I guess once this is running, we actually need to connect it to water as well. We have power over here, so we can get rid of that power plant, which is smelting coal. Look at these boilers. 50 pollution per minute, 250% fuel pollution. These boilers with wood, 20 pollution a minute. And only half a steam engine, or one, one instead of two, so it's only... 10 pollution a minute and this absorbs 5 that is like 10 times better man in terms of raw pollution output all right so i guess let's continue this pattern i think we should copy that power network as well one two three four i think i'm going to need to Cut some stuff down. Okay, I just want to get 10 of those up. Then we have enough power to go deconstruct the dirty coal power plant. Okay, let's just make uh, a couple underground pipes. That's 10 pieces, right? Okay, that's 10 pieces. All right. Okay, we have an attack. Are we polluting anything? No, that means there's another expansion somewhere. Perhaps here. Because there it seems to flicker way too fast. You know, it's, it flickers here as well, but... Yeah. I think that's going to be survivable for a little bit. Alright, let's do a little bit more neat water distribution. Something like this, I guess. That could work. Yeah, that's going to be the other big issue with this is um, expansions they're going to be a lot more aggressive than in default settings all right that blinking tech light <laughs> i don't really feel like doing anything about it at the moment what i'm coming to do i'm coming to deconstruct those that will help a bunch i would get a lot more ocd from my unorganized chests than from my power pole setup don't you think and from my overly full inventory I don't even know what to throw away. I guess burner miners we are not going to be using anymore. I guess we're going to use a lot of power poles as well. Now I have a lot of wood so I can make them. Yes, let's let's move this hole. So where are we gonna place that? Here, actually. It, I guess it's meant to be. 
I don't want the pipe on the path though, so that probably means here. This is exactly not on the path, it could connect like this. Then we need the windmill again. To power the pump. This is like a 20 kilowatt pump. On a 20 kilowatt windmill. That should be alright, right? I saw it was uh, not satisfied in network. Does it consume 21 kilowatt really? Ah, uh, whatever. It probably won't matter. This anyway is not even consumes half the water of what we are planning. I guess I should be making a bunch of gun turrets. I will do that in some assemblers. Like somebody who knows how to play the game. Let's keep some stuff for ourselves as well. We're gonna need a bunch load of ammo. Let's just do that for now. Until we need to craft something else. We're getting somewhere. We're, we're gonna get a, a nice power plant going. This can disappear as well. So am I going to go down? I think I may start going this way first. I'm going to need to put up some gun turret defense as well. Since this, this does produce pollution, these boilers. Even though this absorbs it for now. Alright, let's just flip this around. We cannot flip this, why not? Okay, there's fluid inputs, but they are symmetric, right? And perhaps they have recipes with different fluid inputs. Alright. And we'll do it like that. A lot of garbage in the way. You probably need to clear out those rocks because gun gun turrets uh, fire is blocked by rocks. All right, now we need to connect this not to the windmill like this, I guess. That looks nice. Looks almost almost a, a straight diagonal line. One, two, three. Well, this is gonna take a while, isn't it? Yeah, this is the grand idea for the power plant. Sort of pollution neutral some of the time. <laughs> Until we start using more than half of the power it can generate. Right, so we're gonna need to make more greenhouses now. That is 20, 25. What do we need more? Wood of all things, of course. 30. Okay, iron beams. Iron beams are slow to craft. We're gonna get some. Okay, we have a bunch of iron beams in there. Well, that's a lot of gun turrets already, that's good. Finally some real gun turret production. Looks like the installers definitely cannot keep up. But the steam buffers are being filled, so it is consuming twice as fast as it normally could be. So I think we're still going to be good. Alright, it's time to make a deconstruction planner for uh, wood and rocks. And we'll just select the whole area up to there.
All right. We're gonna have an insane wood production. Perhaps we can even have the furnaces run on wood as well. It's from the overproduction of this um, of this power plant. Because then the furnaces also will output a normal amount of pollution instead of um, having the 250% penalty from the coal. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, man. This does look nice. Look at this. This is a nice structure. I like it. Right. 20 built. Uh, this is going to be the next 10. Here's a lot of stuff. I guess maybe we can spend the grenades to aid us in the deconstructing of the trees. Man, mods take a long time to play, man. Everything is more extensive, convoluted. I guess it's kind of the point. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's a surprising, surprisingly, a surprisingly clean power plant. Okay, we're gonna need more pipes, it seems. So let's just craft 1600 pipes. We'll cancel it in due time, hopefully. If we don't forget. Everything must be square. <laughs> I will I will build a real a real nice main bus. Nice and square. Perfectly ordered. Okay, are we getting to the end? We are about halfway. This power plant is massive compared to any vanilla power plant. I have a feeling I'm forgetting half the things. I think I should be crafting more greenhouses, but I need more glass first. So let's go back and smelt some more glass. And then we'll also make some lamps with the leftover glass. Alright, we need 20 more. Alright. I forgot to pick up the 8 burner and sailors. I think I am going to do that. Before we get to the end. Alright. Yes, let's actually maybe do this. I guess I could start smelting some some stone bricks as well. I think we have enough glass. 17. Yeah, we just need a little bit more. Alright, 10 turrets active there. Maybe a more serious problem than I thought. Okay, it's almost done. Ah, uh, we're missing one of them. One more. These are full again, so we need to empty those out. Okay, 
Yeah, we're gonna have plenty of stuff to... I think we're gonna have plenty of stuff. Make the base. So yeah, this is minimal. I think uh, it's fine. Minimal production. There's still bunches of bullets in there. We are at 44% evolution though. Let's check the... Evolution factor. 40% time, 52% spawner kills. And 9% pollution. That is going to change. I guess pollution is going to be a large factor. Because it still counts, even though it's absorbed again. Also with the air pollution filters. Alright. Now we should have... Enough to make the last one as well. We can finish this build. Alright, there's four of those inserters there. I left my pipes there, didn't I? I left all my pipes there. <sighs> right. Let's just do this organized then. Organized people see that there's a cliff in the way. And that cliff is... That this is not gonna happen. New gun turrets fit on that cliff though. That could be nice. It looks like we can fit like two gun turrets on here. Hmm. Sorry, Kvalun. There's gonna be a gap in my power plant. I guess we'll just compensate by plopping that one at the end. It still should be 50. Arbitrary 50. A bus that suddenly shifts one or two tiles. <laughs> Everything could happen. I'm not saying I'm planning to, but I don't know this mod that well. So... <laughs> yes, we'll do the pipes later. Let's just get the... Get the wood progressing. Processing. Alright. Still not defending this with gun turrets actually, I really should be doing that. Any random attack could just take out a whole bunch of stuff. bunch of gun let's uh, at least start doing it I guess we are most likely to come on this side okay, let's put a couple gun turrets down there I guess I do have some I think I'm just gonna plop a gun turret down between every steam engine like so Perhaps we can make the defense a bit heavier on the edges. Okay, something like that. Yeah, I think that would work nicely. Can get rid of these then. Here as well. Then we should have a bunch of this for lamps. Let's 
make 100 lamps. And I will definitely place them in the base. I should be placing gun turrets on this side first, definitely. Yes, we are gonna run out of ammo. I'm st still going to need to pick up my pipes. Right, I guess it's only built until here, so... I plan to make a sort of a main bus that is kind of easily expandable so that we can simply add more by copy pasting even though we still need to build it ourselves since we don't have construction bots for a while. Okay let's go pick up those pipes, probably the furnaces need emptying again. Actually in time this time, let's grab the pipes, do we need anything else, sticks, maybe iron beams, we are low on those, but the rest is still good. Okay, I can, I have some of those bricks, so let's start laying down a part. At least will save us some walking time. It's probably gonna be enough glass to get us through the early game. Alright, so I guess we are... How many gun turrets do I still have? 16? I think we're gonna need a little bit more gun turrets. But we have almost built the power plant out to completion. Yeah, it's kind of big build to start off with. It is not really necessary to have this much power in the beginning. But the plus side is the, the pollution absorbing effect of this thing is going to be quite significant, I think. I hope. Okay, we need to deconstruct a bunch more stuff. Let's find all the crosses. Love the wall print, yeah, the wall blueprint. I like to make the wall bl blueprints chunk aligned for the for the end game at least. That makes them very easy to place. All right, that is all of the greenhouses placed. Okay, let's see, how is this gonna work? Looks like we can actually complete the power pole pattern. They are exactly not in the way. Here is a single tree. I think that we're gonna keep that tree. We can keep these gun turrets as well. It's 
probably not going to be attacks from this side, I don't think. Okay, this is not going to do anything. I think we will need an underground pipe to bridge from here to here. I think this is going to... Yeah, it has water already. It's going through these, like uh, the uranium miners. They also transfer water between each other. Alright, now we just need to align this up. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Exactly out of range of that uranium, I think. Oh, how close can we get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles. Looks like one, two, three, six tiles. Within six tiles of uranium and you get poison. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, perhaps we can actually see on the map those values. Oh yeah, look at this. The pollution is going down to zero in these chunks. So here it is quite high. It is spreading to here and it's just being sucked away. So it cannot keep up everywhere just yet, but here you can see the effect very clearly. It's just sucking the pollution up. So that won't spread easily over here anymore. This is all below 15. So that is not spreading anymore whenever it's below 15. It's all dissipating already. Alright, so ideally we would have had it a bit more on this side as well, but I guess we cannot have it all. It will function sort of as a sponge, as relatively more pollution will spread this way because the values are lower here. Does it work like that? I'm not quite sure, but... <laughs> Alright, so now this is not only a pollution neutral power plant for as long as we are not using um, for as long as we are not using half of it. It is also a power plant with, which generates its own fuel, right? Because yeah, the greenhouses generate the wood which which the boilers consume. So that's another pretty cool detail about this power plant. We don't need to worry about feeding it with coal or basically we have an infinite supply of self-generating fuel for this power plant. So that is quite neat. I have been building this quite erratically, not systematically at all. Theoretically, I have made the right amount of stuff, so we do have 50 steam engines, as soon as they're all uh, fueled. Uh, they're still fueling themselves, okay, now they start fueling the boilers. This should go up to 37.5 megawatts if everything is right. Alright, then we just need to finish the turret structure. Yeah, it's going to take a while for all this to fill up, so I think the steam engines are not counted yet, unless they have actual steam in them. Alright, so that's the whole south side protected as well. Now we just need to protect the north side a little bit. And I guess we gotta place these sentinels, these uh, low-key raiders in these chunks. Let's uh, first complete the gun turrets.
Okay, I figure that's gonna be enough, even if an attack comes from the side. We have 6, 10, 12 gun turrets, which can reach this reasonably, so I think that should be alright. The attacks on this side should not be too heavy. Let's keep this open, like, uh, we have the turrets on the cliff there. Ah, I see, we don't have water here, that is why we don't have power. Yeah, this needs to be connected still. I was out of pipes. Right, now we have 37.5 megawatts maximum if we discount the damaged ship reactor, which I am going to deconstruct, because I fear uh, biters may want to attack it and then target the spaceship as well. You know how attached I am to my spaceship. Okay, the power setup is done. Finally. That took a while. Four and a half hours in. I thought it would be about maybe two, two and a half hours before uh, I would be this far. But unfortunately, that was quite a miscalculation right so for now let's put some chests here gonna empty my inventory except for the sentinels right so it's all in one chunk i guess we want to have this chunk visible let's just place them on the right side of the power pole and so these have a 3x3 three three junk chunk view, so the next one needs to go in this chunk. And then we can at least view what is going on in this chunk. So again, 3x3, three three, so in the last chunk over here, and then we should be good. So three of those. So these are like radars, so we can still see this part now on the map. Only 3x3 three three chunks, they don't scan new terrain and they consume not a lot of power, like 40 kilowatts. The thing is here, uh, radars, a blue technology man, post oil, blue technology, just to get a simple radar to scan the surroundings. And on top of that, the car is locked behind oil. So that's pretty brutal, yeah? you, you don't have any way to explore terrain except walk around on it. And then normally you have the alien biomes terrain, which is uh, yeah, the alien biomes terrain is not really friendly towards walking speed normally. Okay, I'm gonna take out all of this wood because production is faster anyway. And we can use that to fuel our furnaces, the first batch, until we find some way of automating that. Oh, there's a whole inventory full of wood already. Right, we are halfway that chunk. That is a lot of wood production, man. That is pretty good wood. Yeah, the alien biome strain is not friendly to cars either, yeah, that's right. Uh, where we were? I guess we were about here. A little bit dangerous because it takes a full minute to collect wood, but I guess we are barely using any power. Actually, we are using mostly power for the greenhouses. So I guess enough boilers will receive wood before they run out of steam. Okay, let's make a save. Uh, 3 hours 30, 4 hours. That took us a whole hour, man. Holy. 4 hours 30, 37 and a half megawatts. Man, that took a long time. Right, wood 
guess we're gonna leave the wood here. We cannot carry it all. Um, yeah, where are we gonna take it? I guess we are gonna take it here. So we did research the big storage containers. I guess we have the shelter. We can just bring it to the shelter. Uh, inventory management. Alright, this is our coal. Coal stash, we have a stone stash. We're gonna have to bring over a lot of stuff here. Then we can plan out the furnace area and then we can plan out the science area. Getting quartz and silicon is annoying. Yeah, it comes from the glass later on, right? Or from the glass, also from the crusher, I think. Also stone. It's all stone, right? Quartz and silicon. I think we'll be alright. Uh, wood. Okay, wood is gonna go in the shelter. That thing has 200 inventory slots, so that's gonna take a while. Iron, copper, and our random garbage. Okay, let's take the wood up here. We can easily see how much we have. That is 25,000 units of wood already. Okay, that is pretty decent. Okay, now we're gonna just take down this furnace area. I think we'll go quickly deal with that expansion over there as well. I don't have my inventory on me. Okay, let's first take down the furnace area. You wash sand. Okay, we'll, we'll see that uh, once we get to that point. I already fully mined up this part of the copper ore chunk. Uh, we have a mixed ore patch here, that's gonna be a rather annoying. Okay, so now it's again deconstruction time and then we can start on the base. I guess we'll keep the gun turrets up. I think it's also time for the damaged ship reactor to go now that we have normal power. Okay, we're gonna build this out nicely as well. Yes, we could do it from this angle over here. Just go up a bit. All right, we have a whole bunch of this stuff, so we can probably smelt that here also three for copper ore more coal there we have a lot of we have a lot of resources to work with and we need to make a sort of obsolete chest as well Yes, this could be our obsolete thing. Okay, this we need later. Labs, tech cards. Uh, well, let's just put it in there. Uh, let's just put everything in our random garbage chest. Okay, I will take my inventory actually because... Okay, let's first take down everything. And we'll go take out that nest and then we'll design the base. S smelter arrays only need half the size the normal ratio. Okay. Two lanes for, yeah, we're gonna need two lanes of ore for one lane of plates, right? That uh, seems That seems to be the case. Okay, so we're gonna make a chest of stuff we need later. We have way too much stuff. 
sand. I mean, I guess we could smelt sand. Uh, lab stack cards, we don't need to take that. The rest can kind of stay. That's theoretically I could start crafting a whole bunch of inserters. We have a lot of inserter parts, so that should... Uh, we need, need an automation core for every single inserter. Holy moly. That is expense. Okay, we won't start hand crafting that then just yet. Alright, so this area is fully depleted. I have a bunch of gun turrets again. City blocks with bricks, sand, quartz, silicon is a nightmare. Alright, I'm not a big chains guy, so if I can avoid it, I'm going to go belts. And no city blocks. So I guess that's good for me. <laughs> Well, let's see if we can find an expansion. It is marked on the map over here. Okay, that pops into existence. It's so again just a single nest. Okay, let's see if we can get a, a good look now at that guy. The medium snapper. 200 health, 40 physical damage. That's a bunch of damage. The medium biter only does 15. And he has 100 health. That's actually more health than in vanilla. These nests too, they have 750 health. Vanilla has 350, I think. And medium worms have almost 1000 health, so that's a lot. Alright. I guess this is going to be quite easy as well, though. I, I cannot rush in due to the medium worm. So we're going to have to do that. Okay, let's see. It takes a lot of bullets to take down just one of those. And 11 shots to take out a medium realm. Alright. Just a single nest though. You could make... You can choose the side you put down items on with the insert. Ah, you can... Uh, you can change that. Okay. I guess it won't be necessary really for the furnace area, but maybe for the boss it could be quite handy if you can output on the close by side of the belt. Alright. Everything looks nice. We got a power plant and nothing else. And a bunch of gun turrets to defend whatever needs to be defended. They a little bit are clipping the wing, but that's alright. We are at 45% evolution. <laughs> About to go into big biter territory and we have no base. <laughs> we have nothing. We have a power plant. Right. I guess it is time to start designing how the actual base will look. First of all, yeah, smelting is going to go somewhere up here. Then I'm going to have to bust down here. I want to have a, like a personal crafting area. Like maybe here. Let's see, can we still like fit like... Let's think ahead a little bit. Like an intersection for the power poles. Then we can... I guess we can fit this against here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
if I would do it like this, it would fit exactly in this chunk. Don't know if that's going to be important, probably not. There may be some like semi automation going on there, so. Let's go like this. Maybe we don't need to go 8 wide, maybe 6 wide is alright. Yeah, maybe 6 wide is alright. And then we could start a bus uh, over here. Perhaps we could start a bus and let's go 8 wide. Let's go 6 wide. I cannot make up my mind. Okay, I need to make an... Let's go 6 wide for now. There, I fixed it. Right. So, I saw we need a whole bunch of stuff. How many assembles do I have in total? Only this? Okay, let's handcraft two more. I have the stuff. And now we can make everything we need for the base just right here. Um, first up is going to be... I kind of want to design the bus part first and only then the furnace area so I don't get annoyed by biters all the time while I'm designing my bus. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm not really scared about the about the biters, so I guess let's put some gun turrets down here as well though. I'm not expecting any attacks, I just want to make some bullets just in case. I'm gonna need a bunch of assemblers. What does that require? Iron beams, gears and automation cores in huge quantities. I guess I am carrying all intermediates I have left, so I should be making more of those. Uh, iron gears, iron sticks. Oh, iron sticks I still do have a lot. And I guess... Automation core, since every inserter requires that. And inserter parts. Inserter parts are just automation cores without the copper. So this requires 6 copper, 4 iron sticks, 4 iron gears. And this is just 4 iron sticks, 4 iron gears. So maybe we can combine those on the bus somehow. Already thinking ahead a bit. Okay, let's just go on with that for now. I think I can... I won't automate the machines. I can just handcraft them. If I just have all the intermediates. We have 24. That's going to be 30. 40, 50. That's a good amount to start off with. Okay, so let's see you. What is the stuff we are going to need on the bus? Let's actually not build it where the bus is, because this is a planning. Large power poles stretch a whole chunk if you didn't already know. Ah yeah, wire reach 32. 775, oh, that's nice, then you can chunk align your power grid as well. In vanilla they are like two tiles short, right? Okay, we are... Let's plan some stuff out. Let's actually power these as well. Okay, I guess I just wanted to know if I had space so I can get rid of those for now. Okay, so what stuff do we have access to? Copper cable, iron sticks. I'm just gonna assume you're gonna need everything. Well, I guess not barrels. 
Do we need barrels for anything? Barrel. I don't know. I don't. I think barrels are just barrels. Okay, I'm gonna assume we don't need barrels for anything. They can go later on the bus if we need them. And server parts as an intermediate automation course, green chips, engines. Holy moly, there's a lot of stuff. Blank tech cards, basic tech cards, red tech cards, green tech cards. That's all the stuff which exists at the moment. Okay, how are we gonna organize that? That's a good question. Right, so I have noticed that beams are mostly required to build like machinery and stuff, so it would be good to have uh, gears and beams close by. Do we need beams on the bus though? I know we need gears for some science pack. Let's actually check what this needs again. Yeah, gears directly go into green science. As well as electronic circuits, the automation cores, wood, and I will need wood on the bus. <laughs> and copper cable. Alright. Okay, let's check the recipe book. We're gonna find iron beam. The item, what is it used for? 16 things. Machine, 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 machine. All my machines. Concrete storage tank. Crusher. I don't think I see at the labs. Loaders. I don't see anything re related to science. Okay, let's check. Actually, we can check a bit ahead for tech cards too. Do we need iron beams? Maybe for... Uh, military tech cards or blue tech cards. This requires glass, advanced circuits. I cannot imagine advanced circuits require iron beams. No, copper cables, electronic components. Okay, that is something new. Military tech card, oh, that requires electronic components and blank tech cards and byte research data. That's going to be cokes, biomass and steel. Okay, that's a biomass and steel and cokes are just going to come from the furnace area. So we don't need that on the bus either. Then... Uh, blue tech, glass, we already know how to make glass. Uranium. Oh, uranium is a direct ingredient for purple science. Fast transport barrels and productivity modules. Okay, so that all is pretty specific. So I guess we can just make that next to purple science. Okay, let's check. Maybe productivity modules are used for some other stuff. No, just the uh, production tech cards and module 2. Okay. Then yellow tech, and I think I don't really want to look much further than that. A rocket fuel, low density structures, processing units. This is copper, steel and plastic. And the blue chips are rare metals. Aha! And advanced circuits. Okay, so blue chips don't need green chips, but we need the rare metals. So we need to mine a new type of ore. Actually, that's pretty good since the, like in vanilla, 20 green circuits for a single blue chip. And here we can just mine some resources. Yeah, we can mine some resources. Smelt it in a furnace and that's an ingredient, right? Okay, we need six advanced circuits for two processing units, so that's a lot. Okay, so I guess this set of ingredients is good for now. Two tall short in vanilla, but fixed in 2.0. Alright. Okay, I guess we can get rid of these. Let's set up this, how I'm actually going to be using it. Let's 
chests. I guess repair packs we will keep on the bar. And get rid of all these counters. And put inserters here. As military stuff we'll keep on there. We can do uh, mine uh, miner. furnace and assembly machine and I guess these two will keep open for whatever seems to be necessary at the time all right then we have steel gears and steel beams we don't need them for science just yet but I think I may as well make them steel beam used for That looks like it does not need to go on the bus either, but it is used again in tons of machinery. So it's probably good to have this close by our crafting area here as well. Steel gears, they might need to go on the bus. I don't really see anything that makes me think they should go on the bus though. Alright, so those also don't need to go on the bus. But they are used in a lot of... in a lot of recipes. Alright, we have lamps now. I have lamps. Okay, let's do this. Lights. The lights don't go that far, but at least it's visible a little. Okay, so what if we... So we need iron gears on the bus. We're gonna have a belt of iron incoming. Uh, yeah, let's say incoming and out. I guess we could perhaps just do like a single one with iron beams. They are quite slow to make but we will only need them to make machinery so I, I think that should be good. Alright let's say then we have inputs, we have outputs on the belt. We can have like a splitter with a chest where we put in some stuff, the rest can go to the bus, can balance it on both sides, then it looks like we need to go down a bit. Could go down into this chunk. That's too far. I think that's going to be the alignment. Okay, so if we do like mixed stuff, then we should have another separate one, not on the belt. And then we can later add more gears if that's necessary for science. I don't yet know how much we'll need. So this is only, uh, only iron plates, so we can have a belt of iron plates coming down. And we can basically mirror the build on this side with steel. So we have steel coming down, outputs, inputs and outputs, and, and just mirror it to make it look nice, even though they probably don't need to go on the bus. Skip that one, I'm gonna have some power network like this, and I guess then the next line is gonna be like that, nice and square, all nice squares, no no unsquare stuff here. Don't look at this. This is like temporary. No, it's not, but it's, it's like the transition, right? The whole bus, I'm going to try to keep to a square power pole, power pole pattern. All right. So that gets rid of 
these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys. I guess the next logical thing to do would be sticks and copper cable, perhaps. Right, so let's see. This requires sticks and gear. So this already starts to require stuff which is earlier on the bus. Sticks and gears. None of this requires beams either, right? Sticks and gears and copper. Wood, copper. Plates, gears, pipes. Ah, pipes. Oh, oh yeah, engines. Let's check out engines, actually. Forgot about that. Because I don't think they are used in science. Mm, engine. Used in tu turrets, generators, locomotives. So in vanilla they're used in blue signs, but here they are not used in blue signs. And they don't seem to be used in anything. Still in electric engines though, so we should check that out as well. Maybe we need to put them on the bus for electric engines. Yeah, those are advanced tech cards. Oh, that's really far into the game though. Yeah, I think we'll put them on the bus later then. Advanced tech card is like post-rocket, I think. That's one of the new types. It is, the yellow card is not advanced, right? It is uh, a new type. Yeah, this is utility. So advanced is really far. Okay, we are not going to worry about this. This place is not going to survive that long anyway. Like thing, like up to blue signs. That is the goal. Get us up to blue signs, then we can unlock most of the things we need, and that's all. Right. So engines off the bus for now. We have blank tech cards. We have basic tech cards, which probably should not really go on the bus either, since it is uh, very limited. We are already. I've been using them for a while still, but they are getting phased out as soon as we enter military tech. So this is the last technology which uses basic tech cards. Alright. So wood, copper, iron. Wood, copper, iron. So this makes a good combination together then. Especially since this is going to be temporary, we can probably just flop that down somewhere in there and then take it out once it has become obsolete. And this is a good combo as well, I think. The yeah, iron sticks and this is just extra copper. Oh yeah, that leaves that. I guess let's let's uh, go with that then. I guess we can integrate lights into the bus as well. Is this already fixed location? Maybe. All right. So let's just copy this. It's like a module. I will plop it next to here. And then we can make this into iron sticks and this into copper wire. Except we are going to output it on the bus like normal. So here you have the modular bus then, I guess. That gets rid of those. Then we have inserter parts and automation core. Let's 
So I guess in server parts and automation cores require the same stuff as well. So we can have a mixed belt of iron and gears and add in copper for those so we can still fit it on those two belts. Okay, do we need inserter parts on the bus actually? Inserter parts. Item. Okay, it's ingredient into inserters. That makes sense. But are inserters ingredients into something? I don't think so, I didn't saw that in the and any of the let's not worry about that then let's not put them on the bus then we can perhaps one is enough again perhaps we can do this again how much copper wire do we need this copper wire is quite bulky yeah one belt of copper cable can turn into two uh, one belt of copper plates can turn into two belts of copper cable so let's check the recipe book on the copper cable once more it was using green chips and in red chips which both need to go on the bus probably in pretty large quantities it's also used in the basic tech cards yeah electronic circuits and advanced circuits okay let's check the use for electronic circuits uh, modules we're gonna need loads of modules logistic tech cards okay And advanced circuits are probably used in tons of things to 56 things. Okay, I'm not even going to look through all of that. I'm just going to assume we're going to need loads of those as well. So perhaps we could just do like one of these and make the rest of this a second belt of a second belt of copper cable. We should have copper incoming on this side for the automation cores as well so we have copper on this belt and then probably we have copper on either this belt or this belt so that could work it's like we could go down however much we need later on all right that is this one done this one done i guess then the next one is going to be this trio over here so i guess copy this part of the modular bus ish rock in the way all right uh, let's actually all right some of those lamps may have to go later on if we need long-handed inserters for some recipes which i think we may be needing okay so what is next on the bus next on the bus green chips green chips requires copper wire iron plates and wood where like a full belt of copper cable and a half belt of wood and iron and then we have the blank tag cards those are going to be used are they used in every tag card or are they phased out as well blank tag card blank tag card oh they seem to be used in every science pack in the game up to singularity tag which sounds pretty like ultimate level i think that's the last one all right so those are keepers as well and I guess we're going to need more green circuits. We're going to need more of those as well. But for now, I guess we can just add some of these and we can sneak them out. Not through the, maybe sneak them out of the back towards wherever the labs are going to be, which is probably going to be uh, over here, right next to red and green signs. So one more copy of this module.
and we're going to have we're going to be out of assemblers. Okay, let's go pick up the planners then. We have we have planned and we have we are finished planning. All of these things are on the bus now. Took us a while, but I think this is starting to look pretty decent. We also are going to need gun turrets here. Is he reading chat? So, uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, chat is moving a lot faster suddenly. I put insert parts on the bus and regretted it. Just keep it for your mall. Okay, that's good. Hello, Ashvio. Welcome to the stream. Buffering for others. Cannot see anything. Uh, I can't see anything. Ah, it's frozen. Oh no. It's already back then, I guess. Uh, I have the I have the Twitch channel for a while actually uh, already. Uh, I did a stream on it uh, long. No, I did not have a actual stream on it, but I um, uh, I tried to record uh, I tried to record a stream and then do download the stream to use in a edited video for a. Uh, for specific reasons. It was before I discovered you could actually just record with Streamlabs to your computer as well. <laughs> so in order to save file size from the uncompressed video I normally use, I just streamed to record like some long time lapse bit and uh, then downloaded the stream to my computer to edit it into the, <laughs> the film. Seems pretty dumb by now, but oh well. Gotta learn everything. Okay, I think this is the, ba the bus is done here. We are five hours in, uh, way longer than I had thought we would be. Okay, we're gonna need more laps. What do laps require? I think I'm gonna go with 16 of those, so it's 11 more. And just some copper wire, that's alright. Alright. Let's just lay this out a little bit. Just gonna start with two assemblers of each kind, perhaps four science assemblers because that seems like a normal amount of science assemblers to have. Actually, yeah. 20 seconds. I noticed already the basic tech cards were the same. I think they're all the same actually, at least in the beginning. 5 tech cards for 20 seconds, 5 tech cards for 20 seconds, 5 tech cards for 20 seconds. So yeah, we can actually use that ratio. I should have checked that before I just relied on that. But oh well, I guess I can switch off the chunk grid. As I'm not really using it. Okay. So these accept only 4 types of signs. Five with the basic tech card. Should I keep space for more science packs? Will that be in this area? Is the advanced version of the lab? What is the next lab? Let's search for lab. Oh, it's actually called advanced lab. How many science packs can this process do? Okay, we need it before purple science, so that makes sense. Okay, let's check out the technologies. Okay, I guess the advanced labs must also... Yeah, I guess they can, like, at least five slots they will have. Maybe six. Okay, let's 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 just. It, it keeps the spacing as well if we just do this. Like uh, if we have the next tech pack, 
we can just circle them around or something. Or just have them come up from the back. For now we can have them come up from the back. Have basic tag cards come up from the back. Have normal tag cards go here. And I'm guessing I want to do... I'm guessing I want to do... Uh, blue technology, military technology here. And we'll just route back the stuff which needs that immediately. Because it looks nice, right? All the four science types next to the labs. Okay, I'm really glad I did this before I build the furnace area because no biter attacks, man. No biter attacks. I'm gonna need gun turrets to put above here as well. So I guess something like this we could do. I don't want it super close to the chest because then I will misclick and take out the ammo every single time, probably. Alright, this looks pretty decent for a start. I think it's in the right location already too, I don't need to move it around. This is a little bit annoying that this is in this chunk with the later pollution filtering. So I'm going, going to need to put pollution filters here as well, eventually. Uh, but we'll, we'll see how that goes once we get there, I guess. Or should I just move everything like two tiles down? Okay, how far can we actually reach from here? I can still reach all the way here. Okay, now not anymore. Just want, if I run on the spot, can I access these chests? Reasonably, yes, I can. So we can go one, two, we can go yeah, two tiles down, should be good still. Perhaps we are going to use these large storage boxes anyway. Well, we'll see about that. Alright. So what if I would actually do that? Deconstruct all the crosses and we can see how everything looks. I guess we are deconstructing it. That's alright. Maybe we can then actually set up the furnace area first before actually building it. It was mostly about figuring this out in peace without constant biter interruptions. And that goal we have achieved by now. So we now have kind of a kind of a blueprint. We can actually keep this pattern going, can we not? I think we can. Alright, we need to build it in order though, or the power lines will get messed up. That's good to know. Stream died and had to be refreshed. Yeah, that, that I was worried about that. It only happened two times so far, so not too bad. The Wi-Fi connector in my uh, laptop is broken, so I'm now using my phone to... My phone is connected to Wi-Fi and it's using USB tethering to provide internet to the laptop, which is working pretty well actually, but I didn't know if it was reliable enough for, uh, for streaming. Alright, now the lights don't work since the whole tile boosts. Alright, is this... Is this acceptable or is this like... It is a little bit far down. Alright, 
what about what if we if this one came down as well then does this look bad on the spaceship it kind of does look bad Go like just two tiles right here since this is like not really the base anymore and we could have like a main part on this side spacing is still a little bit far though Yeah, surprisingly stable, yeah. I, w I was, uh, well, I first did it out of, like, like, yeah, not emergency, but, like, uh, I would say it. Uh, I have to move this down too, then. Because, yeah, it was the only solution when it broke, and uh, I found out phones these days have USB tethering. So I thought I might as well use it. But yeah, it's, uh, it works surprisingly well. It, it works really well, actually. Alright, so this is already future planning. Uh, once we get the air pollution filters, this these chunks will not be generating pollution. All the assemblers are in this chunk. So we can hide away the, the kind of ugly pollution filters in the back instead of having to put them in the prime site area over here. Overlaps multiple chunks, it's the center of the tile. If it's exactly on the edge, I forget every time. So if it's like a 2x2 two two entity, like a furnace, and you put it here, I don't really know in what tile the pollution is generated. In which chunk. I have to I have to retest it every time. But if there is a center, then it's the center tile of the thing. Alright. Opinions. How does this look for a part? Maybe we can resume the full width part again behind the spaceship. We just like have a section cut out for the spaceship. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll see. Maybe we can go around as well. We'll see how that goes. Chat approved. Nice approved. Alright. Yeah, I think so too. And it will be nice for late for late game. Alright, then before we actually will build any of that, we will keep it as ghosts for now. And we will first set up the furnace area. So if we get attacked due to the furnace's pollution, we uh, don't lose our assemblers here, since we don't have any defense up. Alright. Okay, let's just keep that there as well. I think let's put back counters here. I'm out of ammo. That's not a big deal, since we don't make pollution. How's it going with the power plant? Already 1.2k wood in every chest, I would say. So that is another 50k wood already. Yeah, but I think we're going to use the wood for the furnace area as well. Instead of coal. Just to get the 2 pollution a minute instead of 5. And we're going to have a lot of furnaces, so that's going to make a big difference. 
Okay, so... How many furnaces do we need? I think, I think it's still 24, right? Because... In vanilla it's 3.2 seconds for one iron plate and now it's just multiplied by 5. So that seems the same ratio. So that is 12. What about the boss? I planned that before the furnaces. I don't understand uh, that question. I think we planned the boss before the furnaces. Now we're going to do furnaces and miners, and then we can build it, basically. Alright, so I guess. How, how does this fit? I think we can get away with... How many? That's like 16, right? So how, what, what if we have four on each side? Then we can have like a center, massive pollution chunk. Is this enough space though? Is this enough space? I don't really think that's enough space. Right. How many things are going to need to go on the bus? So, gears is one, sticks is two, this is three, four. Well, perhaps we can terminate the belt somewhere. So, let's say three, four, four automation cores. For what? Are they used? Are they, are they only going to go to red signs? Red signs. Greenhouse. It looks like they only go to red signs. So these we can just terminate at red signs, right? And then something else can take, take its place. So gears, sticks, wire, wire. That's four. This doesn't count. This is five, maybe six. If we're gonna have two lines, I don't know. Seven. This is not going on the bus. That's not going on the bus. Uh, let's check again the tech cards. Seven. Uh, electronic components are gonna be eight. By the research data, does not require stuff there. Uh, blue tech 8, 8, glass gonna come from the furnace area, advanced circuits is gonna be 9 things on the bus, 9 things, this does, is very specific, it's all, it's not gonna go on the bus, so still 9 things, and that's all gonna go on the bus, so it's like 12, let's say like 12 belts of stuff, and I refuse to look further than the yellow signs, because I think this base already will terminate at blue signs. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Twelve things on the bus and then plates. Let's say two belts of iron, two belts of copper for now. So yeah, this is not gonna fit. We're gonna have to do this then. And later once these chunks are gone, once this ore is gone, we can do this that or we can like do it on this side and we can align it in the middle so we have 12 in the bottom and 12 in the top chunk that might be an, that might be a decent idea as well i think i like that more this is looking a bit cramped over here um it is not my f it is it's the first time i'm gonna complete it probably so i have started to record offline uh default settings run where i really encounter everything for the first time and i have been thinking about editing that in uh into like a single video a la uh dodge Washington, dog jade uh, all of those guys who just make uh, one video out of a single playthrough i think that one would be quite nice to do it since i have a live element and i can have a voice over element but yeah, it's like, I'm not sure yet, do I really want to do that or not? 
But yeah, that we'll see. So now I already know a bunch of stuff from the opening of my first playthrough. Um, but I haven't completed it yet, so... Yeah, I'm not really quite sure yet. Uh, it's kind of conflicting with each other now, this, uh, this Dead World stream, together with the offline recording I'm doing. Yeah, this is 24, 12 in the bottom chunk. Alright, so since we need two belts of ore for one belt of plates, I guess we're gonna have the ore belts just come on the outside, like this. Let's put these down here. That's gonna look like this. Guess we're going to have medium power poles at some point. If we have medium power poles, we can... Oh, they reach actually further, right? Yeah, they reach one tile further than vanilla as well. Actually, that is interesting. Then you can basically, when you have an assembler, you can power inserters on the other side of the assembler with a power pole on this side. That's pretty useful. The pollution when the smelter is in the center of our chunks and the tile in the bottom right gets pollution. Okay, bottom right is then the master, the order. So if it's so if it's like this it will go in the bottom, like this it will go to the right, and like this it will go to the bottom right chunk. We can assume then. Bottom right, alright, let's try to remember that. Right. Plates down the middle. Or down the sides, and I guess we can use long handed later on to. We can use long handed later on, but not yet. That we need to research those steel power poles, which is not too far away, but we need to automate green tech first. So for now, we will just use these and we'll just. Insert a uh, half a stack of wood or something. Alright. Yeah, I want to smelt a little bit of stone so I can complete this part, so I can see how it looks. I don't know, maybe not, maybe this is alright. Should I go closer to the part? I think I can go closer to the part. Just like one tile off. Okay, we're gonna have like a belt of wood coming. And we need a tile to split it. Yeah, we need to go one tile further. Okay, let's do that then, how it was. Then this can be like the fuel belt, right? Okay, let's get rid of the top part for now. We're not gonna use it just yet. So we have ore belt, ore belt, fuel belt. We have fuel belt here. And then that fuel belt can be shared by the next line of furnaces, which are going to be copper, of course. Okay, let's just place those power lines. Okay, how many furnaces do I have? Not enough. I guess for now we'll just set up a single iron smelter and a single copper smeltery. Okay, my crafting area is here. I may want the... I may want the copper smelter just on the left side. It makes it easier to grab. I think. 
think we can do that. It doesn't really conflict with the mine. And then this can become steel, cokes and steel later on. I guess we have to figure out a, a special sort of thing for cokes and steel. It's not going to be that obvious. Let's make some more because we're also going to need... What else is there to smelt? For the moment there is to smelt stone bricks. There is to smelt cokes and steel which already are there. Uh, glass. Uh, silicon. I remember silicon. And rare metals. And I guess that's about as far as we're gonna go. I think silicon is used in those electronic components, right? Silicon is also early game stuff. Electronic components and solar panels. Okay, so only in electronic components, but I guess it's still going to go on the bus. Because electronic components are used in a lot of stuff. Uh, military tech card. Modules. Advanced circuits, yeah. Flying robot frames. Yeah, those have to go in high quantity on the bus as well. So we're gonna have... Uh, do we need stone? Do we need any sort of stone on the bus? Stone. So normally we use stone for rails, which goes into purple signs, but... Okay, we can make a lot of rocks apparently. Sand, stone brick, stone furnace, rail. Rail is not used for anything but railway, so no, it does not need to go on the bus just yet. Click back to stone. Repair packs, a bunch of rocks, a big rock, huge rock, big sandy rock. Electronic components. Wait, electronic components are made different, right? Yeah, glass, silicon and plastic. Am I going crazy? Something wrong? Ah, it has two, two recipes. Okay. Yeah, I read something about that. Uh, late game you have like advanced machinery which can make stuff from raw ore. So that must be one of those double recipes which can do that. Okay, yeah, let's not let's not think about that for now. I would just think glass, silicon, plastic. So yeah. So we're gonna have glass, we're gonna have silicon, which is not unlocked yet. And stone bricks. Do we actually need stone bricks for anything? Walls. Concrete. Walls don't go into military science, right? So what do we need walls for? For gates. Okay. I don't think we need stone nor stone bricks on the bus. Just the products of glass and silicon. Stone bricks. Not used for a lot of stuff. Oil refineries, electric furnace, steel furnace. Yeah, okay. No stone bricks. Okay. I guess we're just gonna do this. We'll figure steel out later. Let's first get to work on iron and copper and get it flowing onto the bus. Yeah, the assembler always has a center since it's a tree by tree entity. So whatever, whatever chunk the center of the assembler is in is the chunk where the pollution is going to go. We're also going to need more miners, I guess. So we're going to make some. What do miners require? Iron beams, iron gears, automation cords. 27, 30, 32. How many miners to build? Good question. 
How much pollution do we want to spread? I think we're going to be fine. I'll just build 16 to start off. That should be enough. We're also going to need a whole bunch load of inserters. I hate it when that happens. Nice square grids, like people like. Okay, there's a bit cramped here. I guess we should probably try to mine up. This little bit of iron into a chest or a furnace for now. I will power it. I will try to power it all with wood since I'm producing a, an F ton of wood everywhere. It looks like the, in, the inserters cannot keep up emptying it out though. I guess that will get fixed once we research. Stack inserter bonus 2, which gives also burner inserters one capacity bonus. So I guess we'll just not worry about that. Oh yeah, right, we need to set the recipe. Keep forgetting about that. So that's gonna mine 170 copper, so uh, that's 170 iron ore. And then this area will be clean. Alright. So let's assume optimal position. laying out the supposed grid. I'm just gonna place like 16 for now. It's quite a big iron patch actually. Okay, that sort of exactly fits without interfering with the copper. And I guess we can have like a later a single line of miners which just mines mixed ores. We'll mix it onto the belt. Perhaps just against the back here. And then we can have copper miners, something like this. I guess this is kind of the center. Something like that will do for the final layout. Alright, so for now, let's just place 16 miners. Uh, Alright, this is one chunk up. I guess we can just move this one chunk down. And these do have their, their walking space in between. 11k, 20k, 25k. I guess this is sort of the central denseness chunk. Okay, we're gonna need a bunch of belts. I forgot about that. We are actually building now, instead of designing. So let's use our assemblers and start transforming our resources into a base. First of all, let's start on the belts. We're gonna need an F ton of belts. That's gonna make 200 belts per assembler. We're gonna need an F ton of inserters. That's gonna require even more iron gears. So let's do this. And a bunch load of iron sticks which are also required for the automation course. 
which are needed for every electronic inserter it seems. Oh, this requires a steel plate, no automation core but an electronic circuit, alright. Looks like we're not gonna have fast inserters for a while. We have loaders actually. That's interesting. Do they require power? Because inserters require a fair deal of power. Can you just load us for some parts? Instead of fast inserters to fill a chest. I think you need like three, four, five, six inserters to pick empty a yellow belt, but a loader will do it for free, I guess. Huh. If they work the same as in vanilla, that is. Alright. Insert these, insert these, insert this, insert this. This is done. It's not done. Okay, what about underground belts? They require iron beams. We're gonna need bunches of iron beams as well. I may be getting a little bit overboard with all of this stuff. Okay, we still have a lot of iron beams, I think. And make all right, that's all right. And even more. How much iron do we still have? We still have 6,000 iron, so plenty. I guess that means we are going to be good on belts. We can make a lot of inserters now. We have the automation cores, not yet. The automation cores are actually quite uh, intense. Inserter parts we have, automation cores, not quite enough. I think this is like 100 inserters. Yeah, like one. 16 servers, that cannot be right. 24, 48. Ah, we're just missing in servers in the ghost here. It's not difficult, we have 48 furnaces, so 96 in servers, right? I'll just make 100 and it will be fine. This has run out. Alright. Well, I really need to be worrying about this gun turrets, probably, since that is gonna be required again. As soon as we start mining. Not quite as soon, but you know what I mean. Gun turrets are not optional. And here we go, mining iron. Guess we'll just split it into the two sides. Yeah, who says you can't hand handcraft on mods with a lot of intermediates? So far it's still working out. That may change in the future. Oh, let's, let's make uh, two of those loaders and see if that works as I hope it does. Like this. Okay, it looks like it, it just works. They don't even need to be powered then. So yeah, if you compare that to a fast inserter, which is like 50 kilowatts, six of those to fill a chest is like 300 kilowatts. That's like 
three miners worth of uh, power. And this thing does it for free. Alright, so the reason I wanted copper on the other side is so that I can take this as well from the path later on. So I can grab copper, iron, stuff from the bus and transform it into what I need. Right. I guess we have some leeway for the pollution. We also need to actually fuel the furnaces. So this we need to get over here. Copper is going to go here and here. A little bit cramped, but I guess we're all right. Perhaps we should have started mining this iron away. Yeah, let's get that started. Temporary belt of our priority input. Input. So that this gets mined up first. Okay, for now though. Copper can just come like this. Where are we coming from? Up there. Finally some progress. Worried about pollution. Okay, we're just gonna, we're gonna assume the first attack is reasonable, even though we are about to cross into big biters. We don't have coal, so that will need to wait. Keep forgetting we need coal to do this. I guess let's just... Okay, we're gonna go grab some wood. That is a lot of wood. Yeah, it's gonna be enough. Okay, that will run for a while. Ideally, until we have uh, automated, or until we have uh, medium power poles, until we after we have automated green signs. Okay, I think I also want to just start mining. Maybe like four miners on stone or something. Just straight into a furnace. Make stone bricks so we can build the path actually. Okay, we need coal for bullets and we need 
four more stacks of wood. Yes, we also need some more power lines, so... Yeah, let's make just a lot of magazines. Okay, we're going to be assuming the first attack is going to be small, since it's going to be coming from pretty far away. I'm going to have to place these next to the furnaces as well. Guess it will be a while before we add glass, silicon and rare metals since it's not a requirement for the current science packs. And after we add that we should have those pollution filters pretty soon, I would imagine. Alright. Everything is kind of covered. I think we are safe enough. Yeah, maybe I'll put some more turrets on the side of the iron miners as well. Just a couple. Alright, I don't really expect attacks from this angle since the water goes like this apparently. So attacks are going to come from the north or from this side. All of this is protected. This side is protected now as well, in case there's expansions here. Yeah, I think we're good to go. We are still not polluting that hard. And pollution has a hard time uh, gaining momentum this far out very fast. So the first attack will be small. And then we can react if we need to. Alright. Now what? Now we can build the bus and connect it to the bus, right? Alright. Guess we'll just... We need more gun turrets, so... Let's do that. Uh, we can do this more. Okay, this iron is disappearing. But not alarmingly fast. Okay, we have a whole bunch of sticks. I guess we also need some in solar parts more. of copper. This seems to be the only real use of copper early on. The uh, copper wire of course and the automation cords. Okay, that can start as well. Gun turrets. Should we automate ammo? I think we can automate some ammo. Rifle magazine.
maybe even that anti-material rifle thing. It's two iron, right? Yeah, two iron, one copper. I have a feeling we're going to need some more of that still before we're done with the spray through. I guess that means we can start crafting stuff for the bus. Oh, we actually have not built these belts and then sails just yet, so that's a little bit of an oopsie. It is only copper, so it is not too bad. So that is copper, that is iron. Okay, so we decided it should go here on the belt. Let's just for now pretend iron is doing this. Two belts of iron. I don't know, maybe. I think if the second belt is gonna come, it may come from further away here. But we'll reserve space. Uh, this is going to be copper. Uh, I guess we're also just going to pretend this is a double belt. We can just fake it. Okay, let's go pick up some of the stone bricks so we can actually complete some part of the part. Alright, pollution factory has started up again. I guess let's go down to here. I'll pick up the rest later. I guess at some point we have to empty these chests out as well. Manually probably. Alright, that was the stone bricks. I kind of feel like I prioritized the wrong area. Okay. So, let's start the fun, right? Finally time for fun, after 6 hours. <laughs> time for fun, boss. Alright, first up we're gonna need then, let's just draw the entire power grid out. That's quite a distance already, just for getting red and green signs out to the labs. I'm out of power lines, I'm out of wood even. You're not gonna tell me I'm out of wood. I probably have over a hundred thousand wood by now. I have 50 chests full of 2000 wood, so that is a hundred thousand wood already by itself, plus whatever is left in here. I do not have any copper cable left, so I can just handcraft some copper cable, it's not a problem. Alright. So first up, we're going to need iron here, steel here. We don't have steel just yet. Steel is going to arrive on the bus just in time, it seems, for this. But we can do iron. Iron. If we first draw iron from the bottom belt, it's going to look like this. We're going to draw steel. 
from a different belt that's going to look like that. So that is going to be iron. So we're going to have automated iron beams and steel gears. Okay, we're going to need a whole bunch more in service as well. I'm guessing we're also going to need a bunch of long-handed ones. Something else we're going to need, I don't really think so. Alright, let's just get it started. Alright, automated iron gears and iron beams. I guess just let's not worry about the belt balancing for now. This is going to be then the first belt on the bus with stuff. I guess this is the space we calculated, 12 belts. We don't need that information anymore. This is not actually going to, going to go on the bus. This is just a fake. This is just a fake. I guess we're definitely going to do one more module with iron gears. They seem to be used in absolutely everything. Okay, the rest I think we can start off with two and see how that goes. So here we're gonna need copper on this side and iron on this side. And this we'll worry about later. Alright, so iron and copper. We already drew from the top, uh, from the bottom belt of iron. Now we're gonna draw from the bottom belt of iron. It's gonna look like that. Copper, I guess we'll start from the bottom belt then, since we did it with iron as well. And immediately we have a problem because the splitter is supposed to be here, so this is going to go like this. And that is copper. Alright. Copper is going to go on the bus. I even feel like we should reserve a second belt for that, at least for a short while. I think... Uh, in the end, one can maybe terminate, yeah, we can probably terminate the first belt at green chips and replace it for green chips. And the second copper belt can go all the way to red chips somewhere in the future. That should be good. Remember, it's only to go until... We're only going to go as far as, like... Blue signs or at the maximum yellow and purple signs. I don't think this plate or this bus is going to go much further than that. Alright. So let's extend everything. Alright, iron sticks is gonna come on the bus over here. And then two belts of copper wire are gonna come on the bus over here. And for all the belts. Let's go make some more. Okay, now we can just grab all of that. So we won't be using a lot of this anymore. That's going to make a whole lot of belts. I'm missing some more gears and I guess more copper. Now we have iron sticks automated. Let's actually limit these chests for now. All of them. Get to a single line. And I can do this. And I can just pick up whatever I need from that. Alright. So we're also 
Yeah, this this is like dual function, right? I'm not really sure yet, but I, I'm guessing it's gonna be the double belt of uh, it's gonna be a double belt of copper wire. So this is uh, iron sticks and iron gears. This is iron sticks and iron gears and copper. Copper is also going to go here. We can just grab these with long handed later on if we change our mind. This light is going to have to go because we're going to have to grab from both belts, or do we? Perhaps not. If we do, if put iron sticks and gears here and copper here, then we should be able to go like this. So this is going to be iron sticks and iron gears, and this is going to be copper then. Okay, let's grab the belts. They should be ready by now. Let's go actually grab more stone bricks so we can actually benefit from that part. Are you kidding me? Are these already out of fuel? Okay, that's pretty fast. Maybe the wood plan is not such a good one because they each have a stack of 200 wood. Yeah, I will, be, I will enable the, uh, the vaults. They are only going to be available for 7 days though. Since uh, this is like a noob channel. Alright, clean concrete mod into action. Everything is just deleted from the concrete. What is it? What is this? This is not clean concrete. Now this is gonna stay apparently. Alright, almost clean concrete. Okay, let's see. I think I just do want to make these splitters. Okay, here we can actually we can fake it. Uh, not really need to, I don't think. Let's uh, proceed instead of getting lost in whatever kind of stuff. Right, so... I guess for now, let's make more insular parts. Eh, one is enough. Okay, this is going to be copper wire. Okay, so we need st sticks and gears on here, which should look like this. And that is a problem because copper needs to go here. Down here. Right, we did draw from the bottom belt, so we can possibly just draw from the top belt now, like this. And then we'll just bridge the gap like that. Alright. I know some people think this is a horrible bus design, <laughs> but everything just wedged together but I just love it. <laughs> I can't help myself. Okay, everything is coming down the bus so that is that is what, what matters in the end. Alright, so these have three ingredients so we're gonna need the long-handed ones here. That is automation scores automated. Right, that's the first complex ingredient, I would say. Right. And I guess... Let's pretend... This is going to be how it looks. And we're gonna have two belts of copper wire incoming. And even just like split all that like that for now. Alright. This is the new pollution cloud. The old one has meanwhile mostly dissipated. If we look the values, we can see very low values over here. Yeah, the 
the absorption rate is just abysmal man 0 0.08 that's like like half of the absorption rate of the lowest tiles in vanilla but here it's already going up quite sizably again and here it was about to dissipate 0 0.5 but unfortunately it's going to get polluted again so i guess i should not actually Maybe we can just do this. I mean, all, all bells are like pairs. Let's just do that and we like fake it, basically. Yeah. Okay, then we're gonna give output priority of steel gears to the left. Nothing else is gonna be on this belt, so this is gonna be empty. But at least it looks like a regular. can also just put a gun turret next to every splitter that should give us adequate defense for now until attacks get too crazy and by, uh, before that happens I will probably just go take them out again okay, so let's not forget to keep up with the gun turrets it's that world after all it should be worried about pythons and stuff instead of endlessly tinkering with this design over here all right so green chips we have and yeah, we are already here right i think we're already here green chips here we have like a couple different and temporary things i guess this is more likely to become green chips. Maybe we can... If we have four of these, we should have four of these as well for now. Alright, so... Blank tech cars are produced like... 5.2 seconds. It's 2.5 a second. 2.5 a second. This is consuming one every four seconds there's one every second one every second it's two per second so i guess we are good with two of these for now until we add military and blue signs two and a half per second yeah one per, uh, yeah that's right and then later we can just get rid of these and we can build more of these here We'll see. We'll see exactly how that goes later on. Alright. Somehow wood, iron and copper cables we need to go. We need a wood belt on the bus. <laughs> we need a wood belt on the bus. Which belt is gonna be the wood belt? I guess the copper first copper cable belt is just gonna terminate here. And the first green chip belt is just gonna come up here. And we can do this sneaky little trick where we do copper wire output priority on the right. And then green chips will go automatically over here. those are there more belts ready yeah we have another 100 belts in here okay i guess we can do that for now since now we have true automation of all these things actually we did have that but we need to refuel all the ferns as it seems Okay, I guess we are not making it to um, medium power poles before having to redo this like a couple times. 
That's alright, it's not too much work. Everything is nice and close by each other. Okay, those were off as well. I do have a gaping hole in my defense here, don't I? That's just a... Uh, I don't have my inventory on me. I'm not expecting attacks from there, but it won't. It does not mean they cannot happen from there. So let's just put like, at least like, a couple gun turrets here, like maybe one in, in the range, so that they go to the next gun turret instead of going through towards my base. Production for now still is low by design, I don't want to overproduce and over pollute all right yeah we're gonna need a chest of wood i guess we'll just for now uh, wood and iron so we need iron and wood Iron and wood on a belt. We're gonna need long-handed inserters for green chips then. And I guess for now... Um, I guess for now we'll just do something like this. With a loader and we'll just add wood until we have it actually on a belt. Let's just grab a single chest of wood. Or how much ever is left here. 5k, that should be, that should last us a while. We don't need green chips except for the green technology cards. And the basic technology cards. So this is going to need to be iron. already true from both sides of the iron belt I think yeah here one here one and we also drew from both sides of the copper belt so it means you can both get a rebalancing splitter at this point and the first be iron belt can already go down here again and that should be enough to automate green chips and the blank tech cards which need copper wire, so they also need long-handed inserters. I'm not sure I actually need blank tech cards in the chest, so let's not worry about that for now. Okay, we have made it to the science assemblers. First, let's assemble this science pack here as well. Okay, so that is this science pack assembled. For now, I'm just gonna do a sneaky backdoor output to the labs. Are oh, they gonna need all? Okay, more lights disappearing. gonna have 16 laps that means they're going to have to come in from much further so that is the depth we are going to go to yes let's go around and we'll just do this for now 
So the labs will have access to the basic tech cards. But first I want to focus on getting red and green signs up. We are very close now. Only automation cores and blank tech cards. And iron gears and green chips. Should I separate this? I think I should. I think let's draw this out one tile further. That is why I should not have built anything ahead of time too far, like this power grid. So we can technically do the tech cards in the middle, the belt with the automation cores, if I can find it. Is there a belt with automation cores? It has not yet come up. Right, so that is a problem. Or is it? So we can still do the trick. Alright, so if green chips go to the left every time, would that work? And automation calls go here. Okay, that does work, right? Yeah, okay. So that one terminates there. I think we need... even need to do this on the other side Automation cores should be coming out of there. We are not making them. That's that's helped them a bit. Yeah, we need to increase our production before we have any real sort of science production going on. All right. So this belt terminates there. This belt is going to stay on the bus, but this belt is going to terminate at red signs. Because red signs is just going to be. The tech cards plus the automation cores, which we'll only need for here. So I guess we'll do another one of those sneaky... Sneaky Terminators. Switch rounds. This looks incredibly cursed to me. That this wasn't... This wasn't possible in the old days, but now it is. Alright. Extreme is still up, so that's good. We are going to need to have... Ah, uh, yeah, actually, that is a problem. I guess we can do that here instead already. Getting a bit carried away with this system now. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit stupid, but if it's stupid and it works, it's not that stupid, right? Okay, what is required for green signs? Just tell me, please. Iron gears and green circuits. Let's get it done. Red and green signs. 
like six and a half hours into the game. It was supposed to be a speedy opening. Alright. This is going to be a problem again. Okay. So ideally we want the green splitter here, but we cannot because of the tech cards. So we can do this instead. And have this come like this. Tech cards go through like this. There is nothing else on the bus which needs to go through. Everything is terminated. Alright. I think we can almost celebrate. Okay, this is all not necessary. I'm not gonna saw those into chests, at least not like this. This is just gonna go... Yeah, how is it gonna go? I guess it's just gonna go straight over the top. This is too far, so we need to do this. And right into the laps. And this is going to go right into the laps as well. I guess this one is also going to be drawn out further then, with three belts. It's uh, not red and green, but military and blue for later on. And it's going to be like this then. And I guess this can stop here. Alright. So close now to green signs. I guess now this is not going to change anymore. Hey, good night, uh, Matja. Yeah, I was hoping to get it done a bit earlier myself as well. But anyway, I don't have a job anymore for to get up in the morning, so I guess I can afford to do these kind of things now. So. <laughs> Every, every negative has a positive. Alright, come on, automation. I'm gonna automate all of it. All the assemblers. Yeah, <laughs> I understand, man. <laughs> so yeah, I if this uh, if it if it goes well and it is going well, I want to do like a single stream every week, and I will probably want to start a bit earlier. Just today, I had some stuff to do in the morning, so I started the stream quite late and it's already past 12 o'clock in the evening here as well right automation oh no not yet because we need these guys Be red and green coming down the belt any moment now. Meanwhile, I'll just quickly sneakily set up these laps. I'm also going to require some long handed ones. Right, finally producing the first automated. Uh, I will, I will enable the VODs, but they will only be available for uh, for one week, since this is a, a newbie channel. 
eventually I intend to stream on YouTube, I think. I don't know, I haven't decided just yet. But on YouTube I have the audience already, so that's a plus, I would say. Right, tech cards, man. We're also going to need signs from the back here. Oh man, almost eight hours to automate red and green signs in the Crastorio. Not too great. Right, we also have this one even. I guess we can just do this. That should work. We can extend this down. And before you know it, a big biter attack will come and wreck me because I didn't place any gun turrets this far up ahead. But if they want to ruin my great moment, well, so be it. Alright, 16 beautiful laps full of uh, full of signs. Pretty nice. Okay, I guess that counts. Automated. Basic tech cards, red tech cards, and green tech cards. Not in a giant quantity just yet. But good enough to at least start some research projects. Like, I guess the first one is going to be that medium electric wall. So we can automate the fuel distribution to the furnaces. Well, I think, yeah, I'm going to end it uh, here because it's been going on for a bit longer than I planned to. I planned to stream for about an hour or four. I planned to get this done in an hour or four. But yeah, Pastorio had other plans. Yeah, I will also, I will personally, I will download the videos from Twitch so I have them as a backup for forever basically so we can always like re-upload them to YouTube or something like uh, probably should make some like a second channel or something for uh, like the not edited uh, content I will be producing all right so far for the automated Basic red and green signs. We have a single lap. We are out of gears here as well. The thing is not so much the iron gear production. It is the iron production. So yeah, next time we are going to work on getting norm normal production up. Getting gun turrets up. We'll set up. Uh, we'll set it up so that it actually works well instead of like this. But yeah, the basics is done. We just gotta fix the production and we are good to go. After the electric energy distribution is in, we can fully automate the wood to the furnaces as well. And then we can have the base running while we research all red and green uh, technologies. And we can go out, leave the base unattended because it will be defended by gun turrets completely. We can go explore out a little bit more. And possibly, likely take out some more biter bases. But this time we will be having uh, more upgrades. We will not be having the car just yet, but uh, yeah, we're going to have to deal with it. At least we have our, our speed up mod. So that is something. Actually, we do have some decent science production after I hand fed these gears in here. Alright, not too bad. Right. 
So yeah, thanks everybody for uh, watching. About 30 viewers. Uh, I guess it's a pretty decent since uh, I only posted it to my patrons directly. It was not meant to be a, like a publicly announced live stream or something. If you happen to ha randomly stumble in through Twitch, hey, well, welcome. Check out my YouTube channel. It has a lot better videos than just the unedited uh, rambling I'm doing right here. This is just going to be something extra, basically, for the ones uh, who have... I know some people have time to only watch the edited content, but for the people who have time to watch uh, more than that, who crave more than that, I want to, of course, produce a little bit more... Uh, yeah, and more nice videos to watch, so... I guess this is a good start. I'm going to save the game. Five, we have basic and red and green automated. Good stuff. I need a bot or a moderator. Yes, I will try to get one before next week. For the next times. Yeah, okay. Hey, Iceberg, man. One of the, one of the oldest supporters on uh, Patreon. Nightbot is a decent choice. Ah, okay, you can get like the same sort of bots like on Discord, I guess. Let me walk into a nice frame where we have a little bit of everything of the base. Like this. All right. So yeah, I I had some people help me set up Discord uh, back in the day. I guess uh, maybe Nightbot is a. I'm getting confused, man. I <laughs> I don't know much about Discord and I don't know anything about Twitch really. So yeah, but we only got the one advertisement right at the very beginning, or did we get more? Nightbot TV, okay. I'll, I'll click that unknown link straight away. I'll, I'll have a look at that. Uh, right after I end the stream, maybe it's easy to uh, just implement. Yeah, it was only one in the very beginning. Well, I thought it was like a genuine question. I, I only skimmed over it and... Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, I guess uh, these bots... Uh, I saw that happen before uh, on other channels where bots automatically answer questions, right? Where you can even have like commands to ask the bot uh, different things on purpose. Alright, the base is uh, not looking so bad though. Let's maybe spend a little bit too long on the planning, but then again... Uh, pretty pretty decent. So this is why we cleared out a lot of biters uh, in the direct vicinity. Now we have uh, now we have had already quite a bit of, quite a bit of leeway to set up smelting and to set up the boss before we're even getting any attacks. Right. So the the attacks will commence not too far into the next episode, but by that time we are going to be out hunting again because we'll be having this fully automated. But also we'll be producing a lot more pollution because we're going to fill in this enti entire patch and stuff. Have normal production. Right. Yeah, for sure. I'll ask on uh, on Discord. I think I'll ask on the Discord uh, if I can't figure it out. Which there's a <laughs> seemingly likely chance that I can't. But uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, try to be a little bit more active on Discord again too. I have barely visited in the past forever basically i don't don't even remember but uh 
yeah, I, I'm going to have to learn to be a bit more active across different platforms here. Yeah. I cannot spend all the time editing the videos. Right. Yeah, I'm going to end it here. Thanks everybody for watching and for chatting and for your input. And I will see you next week, most likely. I will again post uh, a couple hours before or as soon as I can basically pin a time and the day. And uh, you'll see it on the both on the Discord and on uh, Patreon. So yeah, thanks everybody and uh, have a good night or morning or whatever time zone it is in your part of the world, I'm going to go to bed. See you later. <laughs>